So we got about 10 minutes till the tournament from this point. Actually, by the time you see it. Alrighty, here we go. Slash join. Let's see. Bada bang, bada boom. Yes. Oh, I see. I don't see it. Am I not on? Hmm. Meeting on NA. Okay. Just making sure. We don't have a lot of check in so far. Check in. Cool. Checked in. Where the hell's Eric Flair and Ellis Debbie? First of all, checked in. Mio Micah, check in. Drive backs. The fuck? Rebellions checked in. All right, everybody, hang on. Dickwidit.net. All right, we got Min Crystal, Rebellion, Trifax for Jumi. Uh, a lot of these guys are probably sleeping. Sadly, we get in stream back rolling again. Zura checked in and see what we get. Welcome, everybody. 
We were just getting things started to see what we have. We have Trigger checked in. We have Nicarag checked in. We have Cuckoo checked in. Azura, Percival, Nina, Nikich, Rebellion, and Mint Crystal. Many have not, and I DM'd some of them. Nemesim Arino. What's up? So we got just a bit of time before this. And let's see if we can get anybody in otherwise. How you doing, Watakau? Have fun. Welcome. We were just waiting for people to check in and such. <clears throat> Alright, no Demi, no Trifax, no bunch of people so far. Let's see, hopefully they check in. Hello. Sorry, I'm typing to people. Only nine out of 19 <clears throat> checked in. Oof. We need some more people. Hmm. Maybe give them a few between. Oops.
All right, guys, so low check-in, so we might be going to double elimination, <clears throat> it looks like. We're going to give him a few. Alright guys, bear with me. Bear with me. Say something about Pilly Pilly. Well, Pilly Pilly's too silly silly. Sign up for this. Boom with a regular long cat. Boom with a cat just stretched out. Oh my gosh, taking a goblin poop. We got double limb and noise. How you doing, Azura? All right, fam, let's see here. Double elimination. It's a short cat pooping. Let's see what we got. Dan, Dan Mako, Mako says, says I, was I was watching Boom. Boom stream this morning and she raided some other anime draws stream and I left my twitch on when I went to sleep and came back just now to the current twitcher drawing an anime 3D model of some hips nice legendary Dan Mako what's up buddy <laughs> he spelled my name with somebody else what about TJ all right, so Nina and Min Crystal, Nikich and Rebellion. Traeger goes on to fight the winner of Nikich and Rebellion. Eric, Flair and Azura. Nicarak goes on to fight the winner of Nina and Min Crystal, Percival, and Cuckoo. What's going on? Oh, buddy. Uh, 
A dog with cat legs pooping. I love that. I've never heard that boom. Because you never used TTS until today. That's beautiful. Oh, Dan Macko with the long cock. Doing good. Oh, yeah, we got a long cock in chat. <laughs> Biggest dickest, I mean, longest caucus. I didn't say that. Meism says, are you straight up you gonna be that type of man, Sibber John Dings? What? I was so tempted to cat foot the long chicken. Dan Mako says, man, long one, man, long two, 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 man, long three. Oh man, that sounds funny. Dave Testus says Dan Mako that was a nice long cock that got squished. Alright, so we're getting Rebellion and Nickage. There you go, chat. All right. 
Sibber Johnson. Mayism. We're going to stay on it. Yeah, these guys are making me wait here for a minute. Yeah, we got Golden Scam Cat. <laughs> All right, we got our first match coming up here. You read what I just said about scam temper. I mean, sub temper. Starting up. All right, here we are. Spawning in the bottom left hand corner if we get our game coming up here. Representing Team Super, it is Rebellion. And his opponent in the upper right, representing at Platoon, it is Nikic in the red. In this best of three, it's like a pretty standard opener from both players, potentially. Tomboy Tuesday. Is there a freaking day for everything? I'm sure there is. Okay, we got a little bit of lag for some reason. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Bear with me. I'm just going to check and see if there's anything on my end that we can close out of. Let's see. Just in case, but it looks like ISP issue for a second. Just a hiccup. We are good. Alrighty. <clears throat> Well, here to start off, we have a force third for Nikic in the red. Oh, boom, you're going to be disappointed. There's no cheese at the Protoss, sadly, this game so far. But maybe, maybe it will be a cheese. Maybe Nikic is feeling like taking Rebellion Princeton. Alizurg. We don't see any drones across the map. No pool first. No proxy hatch. No double gas from Zerg, and no forge or flower build from Mr. Protoss. We'll see. All right, Probe's going to get away with stealing a few minerals. And Mr. Zorgi's org. Ah, the only good thing is, hey, at least you get your third a little quicker. You shouldn't be able to get blocked that easy for your third hatch like this. Though it is quite annoying to lose your creep spread. All right, let's see what's going on here. Nexus finishing up double gas saturated. Death likely to open. Let's see. Yeah, it's going to be a depth. Okay, we're probably going to see a Twilight. It's Warp Gate, but it still could be Stargate. We shall see what Mr. Rebellion is doing. Nekic is going to take his third hatch. Yeah, yep. Just a smidge behind, but... Okay. 
Got his lings and coins. Gonna spread that creep because he's got a little, uh, little bit of mess up with the creep spread from the force triangle third hatchery. We're just gonna make him mauled. He's gonna be a stargate opener after the stalker follow up. So it looks like we might have the hero build. Or the hero meta, I should say. Overlord is gonna sc actually scout the adept trying to cheekily get around and uh, get some information. Um, and the queen's even going to catch it, getting a little bit of shield damage, a oh, little more than Rebellion had hoped for. We do have some more queens popping. Metabolic boost going to finish for a Zerg, and Oracle is on the way. Second gateway going down. So, all right. And Pro... I uh, don't know. Depth's just going to return home. Not much uh, of a scout there, realistically. All right, we got the 330 Spore going down because he is sure there's a Stargate build. He's pretty confident am of it. Am I or am I Abel so Bacon that you just blew your mind? With the nine months Abel on Prime. Bacon just subscribed, Thank you so much, promised. buddy. Thank you for the nine months. All right, we are going to go try to see a pretty early third base. Pretty standard time, really, for the hero build. Uh, Adept gonna chisel away. Oracle is gonna be forced to activate the pulsar beam and scare away the Lynx for a moment. Second Oracle gonna pop for more defense. Stalker's holding the wall. Warp gate done. And Overlord is over here. So now, okay, he's just going to Oracle into Twilight with some more uh, gateways going down. Zerg player is just saturating, getting another spore and is pumping out those queens. Spreading that creep, making those injects. Getting some map control. All right, so the oracles are just being used defensively so far. And it's going to be a resonating glaive follow-up, actually. Interesting. So it's just oracle opener into resonating glaives at first. Very crazy stuff. And we do have a roach warren coming behind us. Very cool build from Nikich. Uh, okay, with the scouted out, we do have that roach warren going down a little later, but the glaives might be pretty good. And guys, if you could, please use the help OSC command to donate a few dollar dues to help Eddie with the OSC Masters Cup as we're doing the open qualifiers, but there's Rising Star, King of the Hill, and other OSC events. This is a $600 tournament. Oh my gosh, Lemur did it. <laughs> Dating simulator. Okay, Oracle's going in, trying to get some value. Ooh, we got a Stasis Ward. Is going to just get a Ling and a drone. Okay, this one is going to catch a lot of drones. No reaction from our Zerg player because the Adepts are coming in. My god, that Stasis Ward's actually going to be really good uh, considering the Adepts are going to get in there and probably follow up after this. Roach is going to start popping. What a nasty build. Oracle's chilling in the corner of the map. And, well... Ooh, the cancel, and guess what? The timing is pretty clutch. He catches a bunch of the drones. Before this comes, there's a huge ling pop. Oracle's coming in to the main base. Try to get some more va Oh, another stasis ward. This is a nasty build. Oh, a recall is forced on the adepts. Stasis ward doesn't catch much, but what a lot of lost mining time for a Zerg player, who is now down on workers. Uh, it is going to be a blink and forge follow up for a Zerg play or for a Protoss player who's going to land yet another stasis ward. So it's going to be resonating glaive adepts and blink stalkers. The adepts and stalkers are out of position for the fourth, but there's only a shield battery to hold this. All right. He's going to try to wall off over here. Okay. Zerg is going to split this. So the Rojis are poking from the north side of the third base. And the fourth is coming down. It's actually a decent amount of roaches. Uh, but all the adepts are going to be here to defend this side. Ooh, oracles are back to defend as well. Pulsar Beam is going to try to work here. Probe's being pulled to attack as well. Adept's going to segment off to try to save the fourth base. Are going to do so. Beautiful defense from our Protoss player. Gleal Reconstitution for Zerg player. Baneling that's going down. And a fourth hatch. After all that damage, as well as an infestation pit. Okay, very, very interesting stuff. 
And plus one is on the way for a Protoss player. I do like that he was able to drop a, uh, Evo and get melee, though it's delayed. This is kind of a weird build, so uh, not a bad decision from our Zerg player. Bongo tap cat. I, I learned about memes from Boom. That's what Boom does. She educates Dave on memes. All right. It's chat. It's some Twitch streamer friendos. And it, mostly it's Boom. Okay, Boom's not going to be able to... Or not Boom. Jesus Christ, I'm calling Rebellion Boom because of reading chat while this is going on. Rebellion getting some work done and... Hmm. Is not able to get much done with the Adepts. Well, he is now. Roaches and Lings are out of position. Oh, this is going to be a little annoying. They're not going to be able to get much in terms of workers. Yeah, it's a little lackluster of a fight. Not going to be able to survive for long with the Roaches. Does he have any surviving? Uh, does manage to save a few. Probably should just poke in the gnat. Is going to lose one to the Queen. Yeah, yeah those are dead Adepts. Okay, a couple oracles going out. Fifth base going down for Nickic. I wouldn't hate to see him going to a proxy gate, considering he's not going robo and he's just going on a gate explosion. Is not getting... Wow, he only has two gas saturation on his third gas. Our Zerg player is going to finish plus one in centrifugal hook, so we're going to see some banelings. Oh my god, that's a lot of lings. Charge has not been researched, so I don't know why this is happening. Oh, he gets a kill on the Nexus. Some greedy boy gets canceled, and... Not only is that a cancel, that is actually very rough. Oh my god, somebody forgot the charge. Look at this. A lot of slow zealots here. Stalker's trying to get work done. Stasis Ward's trying to get in here. Ooh, decent little Stasis Ward. Not, could have been a lot bigger, but definitely is going to help our Protoss player out. Charge is like a light year away. Double Robo going to follow up behind this. And... Hmm. A lot of Banes. We got centrifugal hooks now. Plus one range attacks coming in. Lurkers. Fast lurkers is the response from Mr. Nikic. I do like this. Uh, so he had the infestation pit. So the, he has the hive. So not only are they fast lurkers he's going into, he's going to have um, seismic spines at a good time. Considering how this game played out, it's fast. I mean, from all that harass. But our Protoss player is on a higher base count than our Zerg player. Well, it's going to be about even, but... Oh, yeah, kill for Rebellion. Does get the fifth hatch from Nikic. So now he's going to be up a base. Lurkers potentially on the way. The Ling Bane is going to be here to be annoying. Stay one Stasis Ward lands as another. Oh, beautiful second Stasis Ward. Ooh, but the Oracles... I uh, wanted to take one of the Corrosive Biles. There's still some more Banes. Ling's getting actually damaged by the files. That's pretty interesting stuff. And that looks like the end of that engagement. We do have 13 Hydras in production. <clears throat> Where are... Well, it's kind of hard in the four base economy. Okay, we got to see the seismic spine started, I hope, after. But right now, Nickage is just pumping out those Hydras. He's getting muscular augments and plus two melee. Uh, yeah, actually, it's going to be plus three melee attacks. So he's going Adaptive Talons first, actually. Funnily enough. It's going to be Double Immortal. There's no Observer. Oh, there is an Observer. Okay, that's kind of nice for Rebellion. Both players pretty close to being maxed out with a pretty massive army supply of Protoss units. And it's Double Forge fell up for Protoss. Oof. Well, now we're seeing Double Evo go behind this. Plus three melee is going to be a little tough, but oof. Banelings leading the charge into some Immortals, so that's not as helpful. Immortals is going to help against the Roaches. Decent amount of Hydras, but the Corrosive Bile just got eaten pretty hard. All right. Zealot's getting some work done in the 12-ish o'clock position base, but Banelings go and finish up some of the rest of them. Uh, Zealots aren't quite dead yet. The Roaches are here, but... Zealots actually kind of finishing them up, funnily enough. Meanwhile, in the main engagement, a little bit of Lingbane Hydra behind this. Groove Spines on the way. Not a lurker to be seen yet. 
But the Immortal Count's been getting chiseled away out here pretty good. Um, but yet again, another uh, Zealot run by coming into this base. Uh, looks like he could be in some trouble. Well, this Protoss, the, the you know, meat of the Protoss army's over on the other side of the map. But nine workers fall for Nikic, who's barely hanging on to his fourth. Five base Protoss with 81 workers it is scary as hell. Okay, we are going to see our first Lurker attempting to be morphed somewhere, but away from the Rev Tag, so Nikic is going to start making them. And they are Rev Tag for the moment, so Rebellion knows what's going on. I don't know why he's taking the six base. He's just doing whatever at this point. He's like, oh, I'm fine. Uh, but there is adaptive talons on these Lurkers with some Carapace. And a lot of this army is just gateway units. A lot of the Immortals have been taken out, so forget uh, Disruptors. We do have just Immortals. Ooh, and they're yellowed across the map with an all-army hotkey. All right. We see a Ling run by trying to go over here, but Lings are going to... Wait, not going to A-move it? Okay, the Lings are going to go in position... Would like to see a cancel on the hatch if you can't. Yeah, because the Zealots should clean that up. A little bit of a skirmish over here, but Zealots getting chipped at by the Lurkers. That's a very high Lurker count. Actually, Zealots waiting to pounce because we're cleaning up some creep. Lurkers going over here to try to defend and save the hatch. And yeah, Protoss is forced back, but does get a kill. Ooh, unfortunately for Nikic, who's on a very high... Uh, a decent lurker count, I should say. He's gonna hop in here. He does have a rev tag. There's five immortals, though. The shield battery going down will be pretty nice for him, though. And I don't know about fighting with these wings just yet. He's gonna kill the fifth base. Zealots are kind of annoying. He does have some defensive lurkers over here. He's gonna move back down. Ah, a little bit of a misclick from Nikic in this engagement. Alrighty. Very, very good stuff. Okay, this is funny. Rebellion decided to take this other base. Actually, that was a six base that went down, so that was not the greatest. Nikic really needs to secure a fifth and, like, trade very efficiently, which is very unfortunate. Wouldn't hate to see him get into some Vipers uh, with this army count from Protoss. Once he gets a fifth base. Doing a good job at defense now. Protoss kind of pushing across the map into this. Okay, we don't want to lose lurkers. Oh, Corrosive Biles do catch an immortal with some zealots. That was actually pretty nice for our Zerg player. Rebellion started to trade less effectively here. Because it is immortals and archons against lurkers. Not like Disruptors, not Sky Toss, but Immortals do decently well. Okay, but not against the Lings with this. And the few Hydras. Yeah, this is going to start shredding the Immortal count. Disruptors are going to be a thing now. As the Robotics Bay finishes in the double... Wait. The double Robo is in jeopardy, though. This base is in jeopardy over here. Uh, there's nothing to defend it. There's Lurkers on two fronts. And the quite literally ballsy double robotics facility may have just cost Rebellion the game. He's going to try to chase this side and get some pressure done with what Immortals he has. He's going to lose both production of Immortals and not be able to get into Disruptors. Uh, Zerg is going to just push in. Wouldn't hate to see a recall. Okay, Zealot's going to try to come on top of this and fight as much as they can. Arcosis Pylon's going to depower a... Photon cannon and battery, as well as allow some work on the mineral line of the third base. Actually, that was the fourth base location. Lings will be cleaned up. Some Archons coming in with this. And Lurkers will probably do some good work on the Zealots, but they will be ultimately cleaned up. We are now actually looking at a 69, a nice worker count for Nikic, who's now going to be able to get not just a fifth, but a sixth base down as well. How the tables have turned, and how our Protoss player has not much to really contend with the Lurkers. He's going to take some good fights here. Uh, Lings are going to just devour these Zealots that are trying to go on. One Lurker being a pest right here, and this is mostly just Hydras. 
but there's one lurker being annoying in that fifth base well the new fifth base for rebellion rebellion is not going to build more workers he's like well we're just going to stand while we have trying to get two robotic facilities up in his fifth base whatever it is at this point because it's been killed we've had some base trades all right three zealots trying to get any work and again Art is going to be completely surrounded. We do have ranged attacks plus three coming for Zerg. No additional upgrades for Protoss, who's just trying to eke their way into the game. And it looks like Nikic is now favored, where he was quite behind for the entire game. All right, we do have a little bit of a wall in here, and Zealots are going to be able to come from the other side. But there's a beautiful surround of Lings right here. All right, I do like the Archon. There's no shield battery in this base, but that base is getting pretty mined out. However, most of the workers are kind of clumped up there. Uh, this base has no static defense and not much really right there to push on it. Well, yeah, there's only three Immortals so far. Disruptors are trying to get out, and the couple Lings and Hydras are scaring the damaged Immortals away. Meanwhile, the Ling run by is potentially going to kill this base as the other one might be able to... No, it's not going to be able to jump on production just yet. That's a very dead base for Protoss. One rando Void Ray is attacking a base over here, forcing an all-army hotkey for Zerg. Well, no, he's actually just got a big-ass control group. Okay, some units trying to fight the links. The Photon Cannon, 22 workers falling from Protoss. And goddamn, somehow Nikish not only survives, but Nikish actually insanely is dominating this game. As Rebellion just has a massive gas bank, and he's going to try to secure uh, base again. Is going to have a second disruptor momentarily, but I don't know. The army supply is looking lower. The worker count is abysmal. He's lost bases left and right, and there's even more Lings running in uh, in kind of an awkward position. Would like to see battery overcharge. There it is. And a bit of an all-army from Protoss. Yeesh. I hate to say it, but this is a little bit of a throw, it looks like, for Mr. Rebellion. I don't see how he's going to come back from this one now. It would rely on him saving this base, getting like some beautiful run by or some kind. There's lurkers defending the, the side base over here. A lot of this is mined out. Oh, God. Yeah, it's going to be like disruptors saving the day, but there's only two. And ooh, third is not finding anything. Actually, there were three disruptors. Yeah, there still are three disruptors gonna rely on disruptors some high templar after because there are vipers out somewhere on the here in the map ling run by is trying to get back through zealot's gonna fizzle away at these lings right here and protoss is gonna a move over there uh hmm okay, he's gonna try to be patient and careful uh ooh, if he can catch some of this army Two disruptors do catch. Oh, catches three lurkers and damages one other. I believe that was three. Uh, Zalnaga Watchtower is going to see that this other base is taken by Rebellion. He's still on 34 workers. Let's see. Does he still have... Hmm. Has some lazy workers he could fix saturating. But he's just trying to hang on by a thread and see what he can do. Open for miracle disruptor shots. But, oh, this is where with that gas bank he had... Would have been nice to see some High Templar morphed. Oh, but that one Disruptor lands. And that's it. The rest of them all cleaned up by Viper Lurker. This looks like we're going to see GG very shortly. And poor Mr. Rebellion is going to be mauling. Nikish takes game number one. In a surprising plot twist. And it looks like Eric Fire advanced on to round three. At the top side. You know, Nicarac is ongoing. Cuckoo's in the double M. Very good stuff.
Chris Yonner is already qualified in this, so he's good to go. By the way, and, uh, as well as Geralt, I think. I thought Nicarak was too, but I think people are playing for posterity, maybe. Anyway, spawning in the upper left-hand corner, down a game, but not out. Give it up for Rebellion. In the blue. And his opponent in the bottom right. It is Nickish in the red. From Platoon, Missouri player, and Team Super. Very unfortunate for our Protoss player. He was in such a great position in game number one, but not so much the case. He was not able to seal the deal. I think he needed to double down on either an earlier... Honestly, either an earlier... Uh, Robo Bay, or just needed to get some other pressure in. How you doing, Pikachu? I'm very surprised to see this. Uh, yes, I do. I have a new camera. It is a Elgato face cam. So we have slightly better camera. For just a webcam, it's probably the best webcam you can get my knowledge I, I don't know I didn't really look around too much for the it's not bad for the price they went down in price a little bit I think too um if you do a lot of streaming alrighty got a cyber core going down and yeah All right, we got a little Scouterino Rebellion just going to go back home. Cybercore on the way. Nothing too cheeky from Zorg or a Protoss. Wonder what we're going to see this game from both of them after we start getting situated in. Nikic came back so strong. So let's see what game two brings us. It's going to be a Stalker opener from Rebellion. Which he wants to get this, uh, he wants to try to get this Overlord. Overlord is going to run for the hills to this watchtower and potentially leave him open for a Ling run by to scout. Okay, just one Ling being sent, hoping to get through in time. Yep, this Stalker is going to chase this for a free scout. Probe is going to get in here. Adept is certainly not going to be found for quite a while. Yeah, that's one dead overlord, but the Ling is not going to be able to make... Oh, look at the micro battle. Ooh, he does force a battery, though. That is kind of nice. Just for one Ling. Okay, he could even save the Ling. But he's not going to save the Ling. Okay, that is one dead. Oh my gosh, these stalkers going out catching another overlord almost. All right, that adept should probably go across if he's going to do this. But he killed one of the Lings, so that's actually pretty funny. Is Chase, he's like, nah, you're not scouting me, mofo. Okay, it's going to be a Dark Templar drop for game number two. We got DT Archon out of our Protoss player. And the Hidden Scout, you know what? Rebellion's just safely getting a Spore anyway. Uh, but let's see if we see a faster layer. Rebellion may expect DTs considering fact that uh we had such a attempt to deny scouting which was successful uh huge ling reinforcements and now he's gonna need this shield battery to come wall for a second oh adept is gonna die before the shade come back and the stalker is certainly not gonna be able to deal with this warp uh warp gate does finish and shield battery will fall another pile on being morphed in before this I uh, don't think the Warp Prism scouted there. Oh, it was. It was. I think it was. No, maybe not. Uh, damn, the Warp Prism is... Possibly scouted here? I'm not sure. But we're going to see some DTs getting warped in thus far. It's just a three-gate DT. Warping, and he's going to go look for a third, but it's actually going to be the natural. 
So maybe we'll just see a pickup. He's going to go try to get some workers or some information or both. Okay, this was a good response from Nickich. He got an earlier Roach Warren. He's going to go kill the Spine, or Spore rather. And there is no layer, by the way. So no layer, no layer started. This hatchery could go down. A lot of things can happen. A lot of units could go down. Or is on the way. Another DT coming in. And he's just going to go with the back base. Uh, with no layer. He can go uncontested to make... Yeah, he can do a lot of things. Yeah, the spore is just going to be coming back. He's just being annoying. I'm trying to posture to get a spore reposition. But no, he's being too greedy. He's almost losing... Literally almost losing this warp prism. He could actually just go and warp in more DTs. He's warping units. Like, a lot of players don't do this, but Nikic is in a position. There's a lot. Of, he could have been warping in anything pretty much. This, oh, the DTs are going to be pretty good, though, to defend the Archon. Why not? He's going to build an immortal behind this going. He's just teching up, but realistically, he could have powerhouse units and got gates. Is not going to be the play. It's going to be a standard DT Archon drop, but he's got to be careful. His War Prism is almost dead. Nickage with a very high supply lead and is going into the lair just now. I don't know. I really don't like this from Rebellion, truthfully. He got his damage. He, he's kind of... Mm, I just don't think he got enough value out of that. He still can get some... Uh, get some damage with the drops. The Lings are going to be out to surround... Yeah, Archons do a good job of getting the Lings, but two Archons with the Roaches just going to chisel, trying to mitigate damage. But they're not quite as good for against the Roaches and Drops as uh, Immortals, of course. Okay, another Immortal on the way. We do have plus one on the way for our Protoss player and plus one melee for our Zerg. With the Gate Explosion. Yeah, Blink should be finishing up in a little while as well. Uh, hmm. Is Protoss going to go try to take a fourth base? So let's see. His Nikich has not been able to take one yet. We're going to see a Baneling Nest go down and some nice creep spread from Nikich. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting timing attack. Uh, we do have an Adept in the Wall Shield Battery finishing. It's not really a very, very heavy Ling aggression, so the Adept and Shield Battery will certainly hold this. Uh, Nikic actually seems like he's just more or less scouting for fourth base. In fact, he doesn't know for sure if there is uh, a base in the back. Army supply now looking pretty scary with that plus one finish and ranged attacks. That's going to be kind of nice for our Protoss player. He's got the two Archons, one kind of damaged on the shields, two Immortals, and a bunch of Blink Stalkers. This is actually still looking pretty powerful. Stalker does eat a corrosive vial. All right, let's see here. And nice blank micro, but oof. The immortal comes forward, eats the corrosive vial, and now well, is going to dodge some more. We've got a gas extractor going down while drones are mining. He needs that extra gas. Fourth hatch going down behind this for our Zerg player. Well, there's one Ling just chilling behind us. Ooh, nice Blink Micro for a second, but we've lost an Immortal. It's just nothing but Blink Stalkers being warped in. Okay, we're going to have the Immortal juggle back a bit. Oh, I love this. The Observer going up top. The Jebate. And it is a Blink. That was absolutely brilliant from our Protoss player. He's going for another Stalker warping on the high ground. Trying to find all sorts of damage. That Warp Prism, though is very injured so he has to be a little careful here okay stalkers are out of blinky blink juice oh nice warp prism micro too that was a powerhouse play from rebellion i think six drones behind this and we're gonna see another stalker warp and this is just pure stalkers he's not going for any more upgrades i would have liked to see him plus two getting research behind this for a protoss uh, he could have afforded it at some time just from on it, being on a control group, but he catches a hatch. It's actually good. Uh, let's take a look at the total trades. 24 stalkers have gone down, though, so it's not like the worst, worst case for Nickich, but it's or not looking great. Yeah, he's at 78 workers, so it's really not that bad, other than the fact that he's only in three hatches, and this Protoss army's looking strong. But again, 
He's getting a uh, ranged attack and some triple hooks. Or Protoss is not upgrading behind this. He's just committed to this almost three base push because the back base only has 12 minerals. So, you know. Hey, welcome, filibuster. And anybody new here? What's the walkover time? Uh, I think like 15 minutes. I have to check the. I will check for you after this game if that's all right. I think we're gonna see it being no. Actually, the game's still going on. Supplies looking pretty even now that that other base was taken, and there's a good amount of drones. But charge is coming. Beautiful blanks. Actually, this army's getting decimated, and our Zerg player, I just think, has lost this. GG. I will take a look. Alright, we're on to game number three. Meanwhile, all sorts of games going on. Winner goes on to fight Trigger with this series. Mint Crystal, I think, must have left. If you couldn't find him and he was in before... Yeah, chances are Mr. Mr. Mint Crystal has left. Oops, sorry. Yeah, most of these have moved on. Percival winner waiting on winner of Nicarac Nina. Which is still going on. Trigger is awaiting. The winner of this. Uh Eric Fire has advanced the lower bracket. Azura is waiting. Cuckoo is awaiting as well maybe and we are on to game number three winner moves on to round two we didn't have a huge sign up, so it's going to be a little bit of waiting here for some folks. And unfortunately for them, it's kind of it's kind of late because we were thinking ahead for when I'm back to work. Keeping a consistent time can be rough. Now let's change it up this time and swap the colors. Spawning in the upper left hand corner of Cosmic Sapphire. Give it up for Nickage from the tune and his opponent coming back with the invisible men in game number two it is rebellion from team super in the blue filibuster and pikachu here Pog while casting two based ah uh, nothing too cheeky from either player again on a big old map like Cosmic Sapphire. Or as Florencio calls it, Cosmic Safari, for those of you guys that know. Mr. Dankcraft himself. The Florencianator. Okay, third base is forced from Rebellion. And on a map this size, oof. That's actually damn annoying. That really messes with the creep spread. This is a really big... Uh, distance between bases in either direction so that actually does mess with the creep spread very very wild stuff yeah let's see this map I actually kind of like it's it's pretty wild stuff you get the rich Vespine gas geysers over there but on this side we have the gold base depending on how where you spawn and <clears throat> how you take your bases and what race you are uh, could lead to some fun games in the late game. Hell, in the early game if you're a memer. Or it's PvP. 
All right, Probe is going to be out, still getting some vision. It's the standard two queen four-ling opener. Cybercore going to finish, and we got some gas sets. So we'll see. Valiant not, like, rushing into the second gas. So I don't think it's going to be anything too cheeky out of a Protoss player. All right. Ah, Stalker opener again. I wonder if he's going to debate DT. Sorry about that, guys. Jesus, I really got to figure this out because I have too many slips in the mouse for my scuffed obs to work. Oof. Let's look at the Overlord. He's just taking the print alert. Nothing too exciting. Stalker is not going to be able to get that Overlord. Unless mistakes are made. All right, third base is... Or sorry, triangle third is the natural for the moment. Okay. Well, the Overlord's debating him. Is it going to live? All right, it's going to be a depth follow-up to it. Another Robo going down here. Just a Robo opener. For the moment for Protoss. Third hatch, about 50% complete. And the Overlord did survive, making its way back to the pillar. Nickage is really not that far on the other side of the map. Has some Overlords kind of placed out to see any positional move out. And is going to go with the foreign links. Uh, as Link Speed finishes to get some information or deny a third. Start to see if there's an extra early one. Okay, it's going to be a Warp Prism. And a Forge. Hmm. So it's literally just one gate, Warp Prism, Forge, Warp Gate. With two units. No Twilight, no Robo Bay. We're probably going to see... Uh, we could potentially see a lot of things. Oop, we're getting some lag here. War Prism is going out. Stalker is going to go catch some stuff. Okay. An Immortal. Is he going to go DTs later? What? What is this? What is he doing? Like, I'm actually confused what Rebellion is doing. I thought he might go into a Robo Bay, but the Forge has, like, question mark. If Zerg gets a read on this somehow, this, uh... Huh. Okay, he's just going to go with some Adepts and just kind of macro out, but he's not going for a third base. Hmm. Two more gates just coming down now. Double Immortals are being produced. It's going to be an Immortal. Okay, it's just going to be an Immortal Charge Lot 2 base all in. It's going to be Immortal Archon Charge Lot or just Immortal Charge Lot. This is weird. All right, two adepts gonna be warped in and shaded. He's gonna shade back, trying to get a little scout. Be annoying. Oh, guess what? These adepts are surrounded. Barely saves him in the warp prism. Uh, so our Zerg player is just macroing up behind this, kind of confused, possibly. No, he just doesn't know where, what's coming. Yeah, it is gonna be an immortal charge lot all in. No extra gas taken. No workers being made. So he might just go into stalkers after. Oh, but there's going to be a Bane boss coming. Uh, mortals are being hidden, so... There's the sentry for the Bane bust. Do like this out of our Zerg player and Protoss player. Oh, it's only one force field, though, and it's just a two-structure wall. Ah, is he paying attention? No, he's not. Oh, but the force field will prevent the links from coming. Cybercore going to fall. Immortals, not the greatest units against... Ceilings, but we do have some uh, charge finishing up here. God damn, it's a four immortal push with plus one. And where is the prism, by the way? Did it get kicked? No, prism still out there. It just went back home. Or did he have to remake it? I uh, know he just brought it back home. It might have just been a recall. Okay, Roach Warren's finishing. That's pretty nice for Nickich, but I think it was not the earliest. He does have the Banelings, though. Banes are going to be so good against the Charge Lots, at least. But that's uh, a lot of Immortal Sentry. Yeah, it's going to be Immortal Sentry. Charge Lot. A Boomer build. Okay, decent force fields. And the Immortals will be around to tank some of this, but... Eh, not a lot of the Banelings falling right now. Ooh, these... Ah, the Charge Lots eat the Banelings. Not exactly ideal, but there's going to be another warp in. These immortals are going to want to stay alive for the roach follow-up. It's going to be a lot of speedlings coming in. 
Zealot's getting some work done on the Queens. GG is called, and Rebellion cheeses his way to victory. Also applies to series. Yeah, exactly. Or just charge a lot of mortal bellium. You're right. It's the creator build. Yeah, you know what? Uh, so now we have Trigger, Rebellion versus Trigger. Coming right up. Rebellion versus Mr. Trigger. Or we can go on to qualifier series. All right, so Nina, first of all. Giddy up. Oh, God. All right, thanks for the follow. Oh, God. Like I said, I know who it is. And we do have a loser bracket, too. So we'll see what's going on, y'all. All right, Nina versus Percival. We're going to do the replays of Trigger and Rebellion after just to let them move along. It'll be just about the same. That way we can get this tournament rolling and everybody gets some Storecraft to, to watch. So it's going to be a double elim qualifier. So only one person is going to qualify in the top 
from the qualifier side, and the rest is invitationals. Uh, and I think OSC points are a big factor in it. So Eddie and I will be doing the invitationals. And we got our first game of the top side. Versa Nina versus Percival. Should it be a good one? This one also is a best at three. And anyway, spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of Tropical Sacrifice in the blue. Give it up for our Terran player, Percival. And in the upper right, she's yellow. She's from License to Kill. Give it up for Nina, our Protoss player. So we got a North American player and a Korean player. Little TVP, PBT to change it up a bit this series. All right, so far, no proxy racks, no proxy gate. Looking uh, like a standard opener from both players. Need to go out for the gateway scout. Gas going down for the P man, Mr. Percival. Ooh, it's going to be a 1-1-1. One, one, one. I'm not really su that surprised. Pretty stylistically normal for Percival. He does like his 1-1-1 one, one, one builds. Nina is not quite ready to build her Cybercore yet, so we're just at a pretty normal time. Let's see what happens here with this scout. You got any probe harass? Is she just going to scout this out? She's going to scout the double gas and is going to be trapped in. For the moment, Nina's going to put some pressure on the supply depot. Being annoying. And it is not going to go recall. Okay, Cybercore is started. Nexus goes down. And let's take a look here. Nina's going to be annoying to the minerals, but it's the wrong mineral patch. Going to see the factory going down. Yeah, that's one annoying probe. She might as well just be annoying with it if she's going to lose it. And is... Does she get it a worker? That would be awesome for her. But she's going to get full surrounded, I'm guessing. Ooh, beautiful micro from Percival. Beautiful micro from Nina, too. Percival had even repairing it in there. Okay, Nina buys a little bit of time with, with the Reaper, but she's going for a Stalker. So Reaper may just make its way in just a little before. Eh, with the Chrono Boost. I don't think so. That stalker's going to be out in the nick of time. A little bit of a saturation difference. Nina building a shield battery just in case anything too cheeky. Uh, but it's going to be Hellions. She could just cancel the... Yeah, I would just cancel the battery in a moment. Scouted the factory, so he didn't know if it was going to be Reapers and Hellions, but it uh, could actually be. Oh, it is not... We see the starport and the tech lab going down for Percival. All right. So I'm going to uh, cover the match before this earlier on, or later on, rather. Just so we have more theories to cover. And we just advance on a little bit to help everybody out here. Yeah, Reaper's not going to be able to catch anything. The Hellion was cleaned up, and as is the rest of it. Now, interestingly enough, we are going to see a Cloak Banshee follow-up. Nina going into Blink, and does not have a Robo started. She 
It's going right for some pressure with three stalkers. Actually, three stalker pressure could be pretty nice, but I hope she gets that robo down. Nina usually would. Um, is going... Okay, there it is. But Cloak is well on its way. Stalkers are actually going to chew through these Marines. High ground or not. Uh, another Marine coming. Actually, another three Marines. It's going to definitely be a little different. Nina microwing really well, though. Uh, is going to clean up the remaining Marines. But is going to start... Ooh, she's got to be careful. Starting to lose these Stalkers. Wants to regen some shields. Is going to go back home. She caught some value so far. Certainly the trades are on Nina's side. Double Robo from Nina. Uh, but hopefully she sniffs out what's to come. We do have a tank from Percival and other on the way. Uh, First Cloak Banshee just going to stay on his side of the map. He's going to go around potentially to the main bay side. So uh, that will be pretty good for him. But Nina's two Robos have finished up. He is going for an Observer. Or actually one of them has. Wait, was she going? I think she accidentally produced double Robo. So she canceled one. Uh, getting a little later third base. It was a mistake. So behind it, Nina canceled one of them. And again, Trigger is going on with his match versus Rebellion. All right, the Banshees are going to make their way out. They do have Cloak, but Nina is going to have Observers out, or an Admin Observer at least, for this. No, she's got two. One across the map, but one will be coming back around. Uh, possibly even catching the Banshees. We shall see. Yeah, Nina is going to see these Banshees, uh, but she is, might have to recall. Oof. Does she have a recall available? Uh, she does, but does not choose to use it. Okay, nice worker pull, I guess, at least. Uh, but Nina is... Yeah, she knows she needs to get the observers in here in time. Stalker's gonna debate a little bit. We're gonna have a couple warfing in up top here. And Blink should be off cooldown. Yep, she's gonna snipe one of the Banshees and almost kills another. So we do have a decloak just to save some energy. Nina has a... An Observer, rather. Nash will let the triangle third. Hopefully it comes in and gets some information. Plus one. Infantry weapons on the way with stem and combat shields. Or Percival. Percival for forced a lot of lost mining time, though. So that actually... Kinda adds up, and hmm. we're not at the point where he's going for a third CC. He might just, yeah, he's just going right now, he's taking a seven-minute third CC, which is to be expected after this kind of build. Oh, Nina sees this. She's gonna wait. Why is she gonna blink? She's hoping Stem's not done. Oh, beautiful blink dodges the cannon or dodges the tank. The Stem is not finished up yet. Nor is combat shields, so she's gonna take some trades. Get in a few Marines before this is done. Yeah, nice blank Stalker, Micro, catching a few more Marines. You know with the good trades, but the really battered Stalkers, though, they did not take the cannon head. That was a nice blank before. So trades, certainly in favor of Nina. Great Micro. She lost 10 probes? Wait, hold the phones. Where'd she lose 10 probes? So she lost a lot more probes than I realized from the Banshees and all that. True boom, Nina fighting. All right, we don't see a charge follow-up, interestingly. Nina, did she get it behind us? She did get charged. I was like, I was hoping she's getting charged. I did see the robo bait come down and is going into plus one ground weapons, plus one infantry armor coming in, concussive shells for our Terran player. Oh, beautiful Nova, doesn't catch the Widow Mine, but does indeed get, oh my God, look at Nina's micro. Holy hell. Kills the Widow Mine. She just split everything off. That is just some sick micro. That was a beautiful disruptor shot to lead. And Percival looks like he's in some trouble here. Doesn't have his third orbital even behind this. He has a very nice army supply, but Nina's starting to get those power units out. And, well, Percival's going for a nasty drop, though. Nina seems like she's sniffing it out, but she's out of position from it. Drop's going to go in. She needs a recall as soon as she sees... Oh, well, I mean, I guess. 
That's a very Arcosis pylon. Anita could blink up there, I guess. She's actually gonna leave some trying to catch him in the back. All right. Yeah, she's good. Okay, she's debating him. She wants to catch this drop. She's just gonna split some stalkers in case he goes back home. Percival's gonna push. Oh, she has nothing to defend down here though. She's gonna attempt to warp in a couple zealots. It's about all she can do off the warping cycle. This looks like this base could die, but there's a disruptor coming down to try to save face. Buys her a little time on that nexus for some units to come, but it's not a lot. Zealot's forcing some uh, Widow Mines to hit, and the army has arrived. The cavalry is here. Nina trying to take a fourth base, but this drop may see it and just go dumpster down. Yeah, the drop's gonna continue down and everything is gonna group up together for another push. Oh my god, trades are going really well for Percival over there. Didn't really see that, but my god, Nina does have a... Is that a killed Nexus? Nope, that was a cancel. She did get a cancel on the Nexus, at least. But Percival and a scary army supply. Nina just finishing up ground armor. So she is going to have some kind of synchronous upgrades. Extended Thermal Lance in the way. She lost a Colossi, okay. Yeah, that was a Colossi loss. She does have three Disruptors, though. And Percival's keeping her busy. This is a scary position to be in when you're on even bases for this long in the game for our Protoss player. Okay, nice. Does the Disruptor catch anything? Does catch some units. Friendly Fire is activated. Does sacrifice a Disruptor for some units. Or sorry. Nah, sacrifices a Stalker from that Nova, rather. And I think Nina has the numbers to clear this up. Oh, beautiful blink. Saves the Stalkers from the Widow Mine. She's just pouncing on these medevacs. Zealot's doing work in the front. And the Nova even cleans up those Widow Mines. Okay, the Observer might be exposed. Nina doesn't have a blink yet. Okay, she does know she's starting to use some blink micro. And is starting to... Wow, she's turning the tides. Percival's being very aggressive. Getting a fourth base behind this, however. Nina needs to get on her feet and get some counter damage. Ooh, one stalker falls, two losing the shield to the Widow Mine. And one of the Widow Mines that falls, another one does. Nina really needs to try to secure a fourth base somehow, and she is going to do so. Uh, luckily, it's going to take some time for a planetary to get situated. But she is going to see this little push coming over here. Uh, however, two Liberators. Oh, no. Nina is not going to lose any stalkers here. The brunt of her army is going to be postured between the triangle third, which is the fourth, and the third base, which is barely hung on by a thread, by the way. She saved that just in time, at least. Army supply looking pretty even. Nina's being patient, getting more disruptors. Uh, this could be pretty wild right here. There's not a lot of stalkers. Oh, she catches one medevac. Doesn't target fire the other. She cleans up most of it. Oh, that is a beautiful pickoff from Nina. Nina is now leading in the army supply, almost two to one. Percival is probably going to get a counterattack pretty soon. She's just massing up the death ball. We'd like to see some uh, te a temple archives go down behind this. Okay, I say that and she's doing it. Percival going for a little bit of pressure here with Marauder Mine. Marine drops, mostly Marauders. Nina going to have some units warped in here. She's expecting something to come at. Yeah, there's already another. Yeah, there's that drop. And Nina's going to push in a third. Disruptor catches some of the SCVs. That base looks like it's going right the hell down, but Percival going to push with a nasty hit. There's some static defense. Can Nina... Oh, yeah, she'd have to micro the batteries to save that. But that base is going to fall. Nina pulls the workers. Is going to retreat. I don't think she really... Yeah, I don't hate it. Planetary Fortress is going to finish up. Even though she loses the work base, she saves the workers, which is the beggar part. Disruptor catches nothing. Oh, one of the medevacs cleaned up. And we don't have an observer here with this. Oof. Yeah, I don't think Nina realizes there's two Widow Mines there. That is a bit of a problem. Yeah, because this army's... Oh my god, this army might just get obliterated by a couple Widow Mines. At least some of the units will in. Uh, decent disruptor control, nice micro, beautiful force fields again. Yeah, some of that. Like the army was, was it pulled? Yeah, only one of the widow mines was debated. Oh, nice no, but Nina looks like she's in a position just to win this, being down a base or not. 
one widow mine lives over here, but she's gonna clean a lot of this up. And a move. Oh, widow mine's just being annoying everywhere. She is gonna be mad and take that one out. Both do survive down here, and there's even one camp on this side. He is gonna catch the orbital. Percival had to cancel the planetary and made an orbital behind this, which means an instant dead base. Disruptor zone in the south is not enough army, but a lot of copium on our Tarian side. GG. Nina takes game number one. Nina's craving tacos right now. Is that what she said? God damn it. I'm going to have to order Taco Bell now. You, I got to cook food. And here you guys got me thinking of getting Taco Bell. I'm not. I'm going to start my oven up in between uh, the other one real quick. So at least that'll go. That was a spicy game. God damn you, now you guys want me wanting tacos. I could make... Wait, do I even have... Tortillas? <laughs> oh boy. He does want tacos. Trigger wants tacos. Nina and Trigger want tacos. And apparently, Percival has had tacos in Korea. Gosh darn it, chat. How you doing, Eason? Soida, how you doing? Any new gamers here, please consider smashing that follow button. Right, we are on to game number two of the series. Down a point, but not out. In the blue. It is the P-Man himself from Korea, Mr. SCC Percival. Ready. Playing Terran. Oops. And his opponent in the upper right. She's yellow. She's deadly. She's got a license to kill on contract. It is Nita. You just got pizza. Boom, I would take pizza even right now. But Dave is going to be smart. I swear to God, if I order food instead of... I'm still going to cook my food. But I'm going to be very disappointed. Percival going for the proxy racks. And Nina... Uh, if we remember when these maps first came out, it was Nina versus Special. And he was hitting her with battle cruisers and everything. We had a great series. Uh, and I believe Beon? This seems... Every time I see this map and I see Nina playing now, she's like an expert of getting proxied by Terran on this map. You had a leftover pizza heated up in your air. That's what you were making, Raven? I'll be honest. I'm actually feeling pizza more, but I live in upstate New York. No, it's not the city, but we have some goddamn good pizza here, too. Nina's going to scout. No, Iraq's going to look around the whole base. And he's not going to find it in the base. And Nina's going to go take her nexus. Hopefully check in her third. Both thirds. Uh, it's going to be a bunker going down. Nina's going to see that, obviously. And she's going to be like, God damn. You are cheese in the Protoss. Boom, redeemed cheese the Protoss a long time back, and she got it. Don't forget salt on those tacos. 
Uh, salty tacos, huh? If you're eating at Taco Bell, you're sure to get a lot of salt in your tacos. Percival had a lot of salty tacos in the game number one. Alright, anyway. Percival getting some good worker kills here. I need to try to micro some workers away. Hey, thanks for the follow. Cardano Outreach. Like in the Cardano, I should say. the. Is that your favorite crypto? I hope not. Cardano got me burned when I used to be in it. Alright, there's just an SCV in the bunker. Uh, another Reaper coming out. Behind it is going to be a factory with a tech lab. The kind of stuff that makes Protoss upset. Is going on right now. Uh, Stalker is about to take some hull damage. Ooh, actually, Nina pulls it just before. There's no hull damage on the Stalker. No shield battery going down. Uh, second Stalker is on the way. Delayed Warp Gate. Okay, Nina's trying to get some extra damage here. Another two racks going down. The barracks is just going to fly back. Wait, he's going to use it to scout. Hmm. Percival could actually just fly that barracks back home otherwise. Or it's somewhere safer. Nina does have a probe on the other side of the map, so it does see that there's no CC yet uh, behind this, funnily enough. Is going to get that Reaper. So she's finally going to be able to start getting some economy. Percival just finishing up his CC. Probe is going to get a read that there's a tank out and does see there's a barracks made back home. So she should know it is a three racks follow up. Well, kind of, sort of. So we're going to see Stim getting research, probably. Combat shields at the same time. eBay going down maybe sometime in the future. Nah, not with this economy yet. Not quite just yet. Ooh, combat shields first. And then stem to follow. Oh no, Nina, not like this. She's going to chisel away at the barracks. But he's going to eat a tank shot. She does get it on fire, though. So it's going to cost some money to repair that barracks. Uh, at the least. But she does save all three stalkers. Got an observer out. Nina going right into Robo Bay. Hmm. Fascinating. She's not going blink. So no Nina. Oh, are we gonna see Colossus drops? It's Nina after all. Chicago pizza, let's be real, is more of a casserole than a pizza. Veteran gamer. Let's be real here, guys. Holy shit, it is Taco Tuesday. Well damn, if I finish in time, my girlfriend goes to bed early here. Might be like, yo, let's go get tacos. Alrighty. Alright, it's gonna be disruptor drops. The gravitic drive being researched by Nina. So she's gonna have speed prism disruptor drops. The balls of doom. But speaking of doom, this is a boys pull. Uh <laughs> two base all in pretty much. She's gonna which has the potential of two drops. It's all scouted. Disruptor with is gonna be launched. And out of bing, bada boom. Decent catch damage is a tank. And is able to secure some of it. You know, with just zealots and stalkers. Okay. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be hilarious. She could actually micro with the warp prism too, the slow zealots is funnily enough. Okay, this disruptor is gonna catch some of it. She's one away at the tank. Oh my god, is Nina just going to 2-0? This is like so aggressive. She did lose all the zealots, but like, who cares? She's in Robotech. She... This is actually pretty funny. Because Percival actually had to pull quite a bit of boys. Uh, he's still going to be, be revolving them, but what his decisions are after is what's going to matter. She does get rid of the... Ooh, she's debating the mines. Look at the micro from Nina. Jumping on top of the tank, trying to save some of this. She did lose the war. Oh, there's another war prism. Is she going to save the disruptor? She does. And the game kind of normalizes. She's getting a Twilight Council behind it. Percival kind of trying to macro out of this, but he's just been pushing. 
So Nina's gonna go find some counter damage with these disruptors. The starport just now starting. Uh, funnily enough. And Nina's gonna start macroing behind it. Going into charge. You gotta go charge after this. And will she go for another Nexus after? Oh, no. Maybe not. She is going to catch some more workers. So 16 workers have been killed by Nina from the push and the drops. It was just one Nova. Now she's going to go zip around and be annoying. It's the thing about speed prisms. Charge is a far cry away. Nina's going to try to get a third, but there's a big push coming from Percival, however. Nina's going to zip around and try to get some more damage. Do we have concussive shells? We do. It's stim. It's the trifecta of stuff from Terran. Oh, she's going to save the disruptors, but she doesn't see this push. Oh, Nina! Is going to drop a Nova on the one tank. She, there are two very damaged tanks, at least. And Nina is going to try to get back with the Warp Prism. Charge is a far cry away, but the Zealots are going to help tank some of the shots. And she does pick off some of the bio units. Battery overcharge Prism, or battery is destroyed. There's only one disruptor on cooldown here, but guess what? The ball's behind. Only catching one tank. The other to follow behind it, and ooh, it is going to catch damage on the other one. There's only like three marines in here. Okay, Nina's just buying time for charge. The battery's going to fall. But guess what? The disruptor is going to zone this back. Third base should finish behind this. And yet another disruptor. She should have one more on cooldown. Oh, here comes the Colossi. Beautiful juggling of the balls. Disruptor kills in a uh, kills in a marauder rather, and oh no, oh no! Nina's losing the disruptors. Charge has finished, but a little bit of misplay girl there. Colossi is almost dead. Boys are forced to be pulled, and Nina is trying to get around this. Disruptor cleans up both tanks, and she even saves the probes. Most of the probes, I should say. Okay, she's got a lot of sentries coming. Zealots trying to chase down concussive shell marauders with a very, very badly injured Colossi. She's going to have another Colossi in production. Disruptors going back out across the map. And it's the balls of doom, folks. Percival actually leading on workers and just going in to do... He's committing. This is a two-base all-in. Nina does have the third base, however, and well, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, Dan Mackle, I'm with you. I was a fat kid. How you doing? Welcome. Oh my gosh, we got a lot of the gang here today. Okay, need to get a disruptor drop on bio. Oh, oh so close yet so far. But she is going to potentially see this as a two base all in. Percival with the nasty army supply lead. But Nina's just mustering up the forces. Would like to see... Okay, she's going to have the third... Colo no. She's going to be an observer. She's getting extended thermal lance and is going to be able to make some Archons. Which I don't hate, but... Rodos is... Or, sorry, Parrot is pushing right now. More Prism does scout this. Nita's going to zip back home. She's going to morph an Archon and just has sentries, two Colossi. Zealots, extended thermal lance, a ways away. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, not this fight. Kanina has to retreat, but... Some of the zealots are gonna fall. Okay, she wants to get in position. Beautiful force fields, though. The tanks aren't sieged up just yet. This buys her a little bit of time as the Terran army segmented. And she has some more force fields available. Four prisms back for some juggling. And she still has the Archon. She's gonna make another one. Ooh, that's a nasty siege position, though. I thought Nina just had this before, but never underestimate the power of two bays mule. This push seemingly going on forever, even with all the counter damage before. War Prism still alive for the moment. Colossi is saved. She's down to a Disruptor in a Dream. Does she get it? No. GG. Percival takes game number two. With a two base all in. Very cool game, though. Up. Next to the follow Impact 083. How you doing, Boom OSOS?
Cosmic Sapphire is... We're going to actually cast the trigger. Apparently triggered and Rebellion didn't understand what I was saying. I was trying to make it easier for everybody. So we still have the coverage, but they can play the games. Because I know chat will be fine with it. We like live games, but if they're playing it live right at the same time, it gives us a little buffer zone. It gives me a little buffer zone here, too. Because we have more games to come. Oh, it's Trigger versus Eric Flair. Oh, wait. All right, hang on a second, guys. All right, anyway, here we go. I had a little miscommunication. They played the other ones. Anyway, we are on match point. I had a little bit of a miscommunication here. Spawning in the upper left-hand corner of Cosmic Sapphire. In the blue, it is Percival. And it's 1-1. In the best of three. And his opponent at the bottom right. Give it up for Anita from License to Kill in the yellow. I fucked up hard on that. Hi, Dad, Kappa. Boom to boom, SOS. Oh, my goodness. Was it meta sometime back to add like a million vowels in your name? On Twitch, being somebody that got into Twitch a little later? I, I never, I, I always wondered that, Boom. Obviously, Boom would be taken a gazillion times. But there's so many streamers with lots of vowels in their names, or just like sometimes just nonsense names, seemingly. With oohs and o's and ahs and e's. I must have missed the meme. All right, it's gonna look pretty standard for Mina. Uh, Percival going for a re... No, not even a Reaper expand, but he is going for an expand Arena. Mina is gonna try to get this probe out. It should be able to save it from the Marine. Okay, we're gonna see a tech lab right away. Oh, it's gonna be probably Concussive Shell Marauder opener from Percival. And that will be not scouted at the moment. SCV scout's going to just see that everything's looking pretty standard from Nina. Oh, man. That is very unfortunate. I would have totally told Eric Fire and Trigger to wait. So sorry about that, chat. We're going to have the game one cast by replay. I hope they don't play the whole series out. That would be... suck. It's alright, we can get the replays of it if need be. Because Cuckoo's up really late on a weeknight as well. Ooh, Nina gonna get the... not only Scout, but she's gonna mess with the... Oh my god, she messed with... look at this! She totally debated the Sim City of Percival with the adapt. This is a wanky start for Percival, that's for sure. He definitely got debated. He has the concussive shell opener, but uh, his whole structures are are kind of hacked up here. He was able to, yeah, yeah. He's gonna be able to get the starport just there. Though so he's probably gonna go cloak banshees, or is he gonna go into ravens? I'm curious. Are we just gonna switch it around again? That makes I'm confused. Nope, it's window memes from Percival. But Nina's going into Dank Templar. Oh, buddy. Uh, let's see this. Three stalkers and a battery against two concussive shell marauders. And a marine, but Nina can't be too greedy with it. She's not going to spread too far away. It's going to take a little bit of all damage and clean up 
the rest of it, but that one concussive shell marauder makes it snowing. He's going to clean it up, taking some hull damage. You actually watch the Twitch user boom, they stream PUBG. That's hilarious. Neat. Uh, boom. What home? Oh my gosh. Boom and boom SOS with the memes in chat. Okay, Nina with the proxy. I like this. We got cheese from the Protoss. And it is not going to be a Raven right away, but it's certainly going to be a Raven follow-up. That's the plan. So this could actually be quite a bit of a pain for Nina, but... Ah, DT's coming in. Yeah, that Raven takes a while to get made. Slow warping or not, she's going to have some time. A window of opportunity for the cheeky, fast DTs. But with Link Stalkers, this is going to be good against the 1 1 1, so it's not like it's all in, but she just has it delayed as hell. Third base, and she even has the units there. Oh my god, that Raven's a bit away. A mule is going to be available. Or, or not a mule, a mule or a scan. Scan is going to be available now. Oh boy, Nina better split these DTs up. Okay, she micros the last second. Raven's going to pop, though. A lot of the army is going to go down because his combat shields isn't done yet. Nina trying to save a DT is going to lose. One here and maybe catch some damage. Yeah, because there wasn't a lot of army units. She's going to damage the tank. That's kind of nice. And forced a lot of lost mining time for Percival and an oversaturated base. And Nina's committed to two bases, though. Okay, just now getting the... Okay, did that Widow Mine drop do anything? No, it forced Percival to not get any damage with the Widow Mine drop. I... Oh, never mind. Dave was looking away. That DT action was too good. We had 11 workers lost. Ah, this game's uh, not looking the greatest for Nina, but not. The, it could be better, it could be worse. Going into a Robo Bay, delayed third. That explains why she didn't take a third with it. Oh, my dear lord. Caster man slipping. Oh, jeez. Third base going down for Nina at a very late time. Looking like a disaster. Two DT is going to be tried to be warped in. A Terran player playing really defensive, so this is not going to be good for Nina. Percival going for the reactor on the starport. His supply blocked. Army supply looking pretty even. Stevens for the moment, but it's Blink Stalker. Charge is not done yet. She does have some zealots done in advance. And Nina's probably not going to be able to get much done here. Uh, or will she? Raven's out of position. Okay, she's going to get a couple workers, and she needs to after what happened before. She's going to go right for the tank, but the Raven's going to come out. And, ooh, does get a tank and saves the DT for the moment. I don't like this play because there was a tank right there, and she's going to lose it both DTs because of it. Uh, from the Interference Matrix. Does have a probe on the Zelnaga Watchtower and a nice pylon for scouting for drops on the east side, at least. All right, first Colossus is out, second on the way. Uh, extended Thermal Lance not being researched yet because she just doesn't have the money for it. A Terran player not quite going for a third base just yet. Or, well, hmm. I think we're going to see a third eventually, but he, we don't see two more racks being dropped. This is the only weird thing. Archon trying to find some damage, but that's a mm, a bold move. That war prism could go down to an auto turret if Nina missed micros. Yeah, it's cutting it close to land. Okay, Nina's breaking down the rocks. And is getting extended thermal lance. She does have her third base going, and our Terran player, Mr. Percival, is going to push, but Nina has the army supply lead for the moment. She's being damn annoying with this. Raven scouting around, and... Hmm. I wonder if Percival is going to look for that proxy pylon after. Ah, uh, funnily enough, Nina could use that behind this in the push, but there's going to be a missile turret. Third CC going down for Percival. And Nina still does have the army supply advantage. Observer is going to scout this. The Raven's not part of the push, and funnily enough, okay, he's going to back off. Shh. Okay, the Raven did end up joining. He does have most of the energy. Observer going down. 
the push is thwarted. Nina is just going to macro behind this. They're both kind of having a little bit of a war of attrition now. Because they're pretty even. Nina should be taking a fourth base because she's just pushed the Percival back. And considering the army supply, I would not hate a fourth base behind this. She can afford it. Getting a gas bank. All right, we're going to see Disruptors. Extended Thermal Lance coming. <clears throat> Plus one ground weapons coming for Nina. Uh, with the charge finishing up here. Okay, now she's just going to charge a lot. Archon with the Blinky Boys and the Extended Thermal Lance Colossus. But look at this place. Yeah, you can't crack that. Nina's not going to be... She really shouldn't push this. That's quite the Sim City from Percival. Look at this. The Ebays. I mean, she... That's a... She's really going to need some information. Hopefully, she just doesn't try to jump on this. And she... It looks like... Oh. Wait, actually... Oh, inter the anti-armor missile and the double interference matrix. That was all... That was some crazy Raven micro, as crazy as that sounds. Uh, Colossi just died. Nina, with the lead she had, is now in a lot of trouble. She does have a disruptor follow-up, though, so... Mm, I'm actually curious to see the trades. It obviously went better for Percival there, but... God damn. That was not the fight you want to take. Okay, she did get a fourth base behind it. it is going to try to do a disruptor drop. Wait, was I thought I saw a widow mine, but it was just a graphical glitch. Oh boy, the loser has to eat the fuzz in your belly button. Oh boy, that's pretty messed up. And, well, 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 well. Alright, force base getting saturated. Percival now going for a fourth of his own. Yeah, where are we at? We're at 66 to 56 workers. Not a high worker count game. Nina's trying to rebuild her army. Going to Psionic Storm and double forge. She is getting another robotics facility. Does not have the units just yet. Is going to scout this? Uh, does she save the... Oh, she's trying to get a, a disruptor. No, Nina! The war prism is in harm's way. But Percival has to be careful. There's a disruptor with this army. And Nina shouldn't overextend here. Okay, she's not going through the zealot behind this. It's going to be annoying. Disruptor going to zone this out. That was the Jebe. Oh, she actually gets the... Oh, no, no, no. We don't want to see another disruptor loss, but she isn't going to lose it. That was damn close. Stalker's actually cleaning up a lot of the medevacs. We have a disruptor behind us. Did she land it? There's ghost in here. Oh my god, that was so close. Bio so strong. And the war prism and the disruptor are destroyed. There is a shield battery here. And with the ghost, though, these storms could be a thing of the past. Nina trying to save the high templar to the side. One EMP is landed, but guess what? There's more EMPs and there's more storms. Behind this, charge lots are getting clumped up. Stalker's trying to take the engage. Another storm landed. Some of the ghosts going on one with full energy. Oh my god, everything's EMP. Is Dina just going to lose this? Two Colossus coming down behind us. And that's a lot of Terran. It's just Stalker's Archon trying to be morphed in. But it looks like it's going to fall before it can even take a shot. Some Zealots being morphed behind. Two more tanks following up for Percival. It's that deadly push. This fourth base looks like it's in a lot of trouble. Nina trying to buy time for the Colossi, trying to muster up a force, and with no batteries, this is hard as hell to hold. Jebating the army back, but yeah, that base looks really dead. Nina's going to try to save the workers, but the army's just going to be able to pounce on this. What's Nina? Where is Nina? Actually, she lost. Should she recall? She recalled her army. Okay. Colossi is out. Shield battery not in the front. Oh, no, that Colossi is going to fall immediately. Just out of position from how it landed. Second Colossi is out, going to be able to help in the fight. Does not take the EMP. However, a lot of the Zealots and Stalkers do. Battery overcharge is activated. One of the tanks goes down. Nina trying to hold on, but it looks like Percival is going to come in hot and take this game pretty soon. I don't see if she holds. I don't really know how she's going to come back. It's a four-base Terran. 
I mean, he's on 62 workers in the fourth. We gotta assume he's a planetary. If she does hold this somehow, no, oh, decent disruptor, another disruptor following up behind it. Uh, does fall short with anything, even the tanks. However, now there's liberators and nothing to contest them. GG is called and Percival advances. Damn, very unlucky for Neens. All right, so I'm going to see what else we got going on. Trigger and... Okay, it's 1-1. One, one. This is match point, so we're going to do it in reverse order for Trigger and Eric Fire. And then we have the loser's bracket. It's uh, Percival has qualified, by the way. Percival has qualified. Oh, no, actually, he is, and the qualifiers are going to be after this. Uh, then we'll have to see the lower side of it. All right, anyway... Score being 1-1, one, one, and in the upper right-hand corner of this, Protoss versus Protoss. In the red, representing Team Super, it is a Trigger. And his opponent in the bottom left, representing Alpha X, give it up for Eric Fire. Winner of this advances to the qualifying series. Whoever wins that is the qualifier is going to win it. And then we have the lower bracket going on, which the winner of that goes on to the event. From there, it's invitational. But these are the two qualifying spots everybody's fighting for, for the $600 event. Well, OSC has so many. Hey guys, if you want to help OSC out, please and thank you. Take a look at this. Petition for Psystorm to pick up Percival. Oh, I'd wish. Uh, I don't think they're in putting more money into it. Percival was the uh, player who would not play for free. That's for sure. Uh, but that would be actually a huge pickup. If I could recommend anybody, I I am with you, Dan Mako. Trust me, he would be. He would be uh, my suggestion to KJ. Without doubt. And Draquette and everybody else. I'm sure Snowden would be like, hell yeah, we want him on the team. <laughs> Percival is pretty OP. But that was, it was a sick uh, series. All right, we are going to get a little harassed from Eric Fire Trigger going for the fast expand. Eric Fire for a two gate. Uh, he's going three gate robo, it looks like, or two gate stargate. Uh, but I'm guessing it's robo. Yeah, he's just waiting for that cyber core to finish and warp gates going down. He's going to get Robo before Stalker. Oh, buddy. Trigger is going to know what this is. I have a feeling the T-Man's going to know what this is. He's going Stargate 2. Pro barely alive from Mr. Eric Fire. Trigger with the delayed. Nexus isn't going to be a problem because he went Stargate. He's going to have a couple of units out and the shield battery to follow. Pretty sh Yeah, he's got the shield battery. So he should have some units, but Trigger may go out to scout. No, he isn't going to scout for it. He's expecting something, though. Is Stargate going to finish? And actually, let's see if we see a rally point on it after. That would be quite good. Do not. Behind this... Uh, yeah, Actually, interestingly enough, we have two off gas for our blue Protoss player. So he's probably going to go in for a War Prism. Yeah, he is. He's going for the War Prism variety. A uh, trigger reads this. He's playing like max packs. He is going void ray. And he's going to try to take the zealot to debate some shots and get a victory there. 
And guess what? He knows where the proxy is, too. Okay, Trigger's gonna take the Zealot to go scout for... He's gonna... No, he doesn't know where the proxy is. He's taking the Zealot to look over here. I do like the Void Ray choice, but... The War Prism's coming in. Oh, War Prism will be scouted. Trigger is gonna immediately go on, thick beam it up, and it, try to play carefully. I love how we drop the battery there. So Trigger is leading on two bases. Uh, and again, it's three gate Robo to the proxy gate. Variety and at War Prism opener. Another Void Ray on the way. Trigger does have a decent amount of units, but that's gonna be a lot of stalkers. Zella actually chasing a sentry. That's hilarious. But it's only one uh, battery is part of the wall. Okay, trigger not, trigger not overextending. Warp Gate's going to finish. He has another gate just now coming because Void Rays are damn expensive. And do take a while. So it's not like it's an insta win. Probe still out in the map cheekily. Enough. All right, we got a third Void Ray coming. And Warp Gate just finishing for trigger now. He's going to get another battery behind the pylon. Wouldn't have hated another pile on there, truthfully. But, okay, so he's got a decent stalker count. But now with two batteries, this should be helpful in holding. Third Void Ray not quite there yet. Ooh, Trigger is losing stalkers left and right. Nice War Prism Micro from Eric Fire. Uh, don't hate him keeping that on for the moment. Yeah, it probably could have canceled to give him a little less, a uh, little less cooldown time. Gonna warp in a couple more stalkers. Third Void Ray is gonna join the fight. And yeah, the back battery, I do like. He's gonna build another one. But he, at some point, he might want a less Arthosis pylon. Eric Fire going with an, another pylon somewhere for more production. Oof, he just got so many stalkers, though. Okay, he does have one prismatic alignment available. The others should follow up pretty soon. We're going to try to be patient, cautious, getting yet another Void Ray. No Immortals out from Eric Fire, which I don't hate considering it's all Void Rays and Stalkers. Okay. Okay, there's extra Prismatic Alignment activated. Trigger going to activate a third one, and he's holding on with Battery Overcharge, trying to push the issue, but it's kind of hard with the Warp Prism Micro. Yeah, see, Void Rays are just so slow with it activated. It's a little tough. He ain't out yet, but he has to hold. This is 100% all in from Eric Fire. What a way to end the series. As we uh, are going to see the other matches in reverse just to help everybody out. Okay, Nina's advanced on to the other spot. And the other side. Oh, my dear Lord. Possibly from a walkover. And yeah, oh my god. Trigger is taking a tough fight. It's a hard fight. This is actually very hard to hold. More than you'd think when you'd open Stargate. It's at least, yeah. Like if it was the old Void Rays, it's so much easier to hold this. But it's definitely made it a lot more difficult. You can see how shitty Void Rays really are when they've been uh, nerfed in the time in this matchup. I doubt it. it's the one matchup that I think kind of made things a little wonky. But it always was a little wonky. Still a great matchup. Oh my god, one of the Voidery is going to fall. Thick Beam's available on the other. That War Prism still lives. And the fight ensues. Trigger's actually macroing behind us, getting another gateway yet again. Eric Flyer, though. Well, he's not quite mining out, but he's not at a point of getting a base trigger. Using probes as weapons in part of the wall. Which he has to, kind of. But he doesn't want to overextend. Okay, two more gates going to finish for trigger. This is where I wouldn't hate sentries, truthfully, if nothing else. But trigger is also only mining on two gas. Both player. Okay, Eric Fire somehow not mining out. Trigger, I think, over oversatched. Okay, we are going to see more stalkers from Trigger, but he's about to lose that gate. Okay, Prismatic Alignment activated, Stalkers target firing, but now Trigger has a lot of stalkers of his own. Probe's getting pulled, but they got a little missed micro, because you know what? You can't really click and debate both of those. He's going to pull back. Okay, the two, the other gate's going to finish, so for a moment, as long as this gateway lives, he does have four gates. And the army supply is hugely in favor of Eric Fire. 
uh, looks very much in Eric Flair's favor. However, with four... Well, that's going to be less. The Cyber Core going down would be rough. A lot of Eric Flair's army is damaged, though. And the War Prism was out for warping. Not picking up some of these battery overcharge activated. Is allowing Trigger some time. Trigger actually is doing it. He may just do it here now with the probes pulled. Warp Prism Micro or not, he's going to be able to get a lot more in. There's a slow warp in, though, behind this. It is getting interesting. Trigger does have some time. Only three gates. He's going to get a void right now again with this. Pulling workers, building more workers. Again, this is 100% committal from Eric Flair. Trigger with a nice target flaring. is going to make some trades and choices. The probe is actually helping hugely. And that was actually a good call on those probe pulls. Eric Flair even using his one probe with this. Okay, Trigger needs to wait for this Void Ray. Get back to mining. He has taken a gas behind this. I love how Trigger just got probes even looking. He doesn't trust the situation, but it's 100% all in. This is long distance mining out of Eric Flair. He's got to do it now if he is at all. Ooh. The target flare of the Stalkers and the Void Ray actually helped Trigger a little bit as he pounced on it with the Stalkers and the probes. Probes could get back to mining. I really wouldn't hate it if Trigger did that to get a little more gas. All right. Trigger is now a slight army supply advantage, and he has better health units with some batteries. He is going to clean this up eventually. If he's as patient, caution. There goes the War Prism, and GD is called. Trigger has advanced the qualifiers. Okay. All right. Rigor Percival. Okay, it's Trigger Percival for the qualifiers. B05. This is the best of five. Give it a minute. I need a moment, and it is Trigger and Percival. All right, gamers, I am back. Welcome, Twist and Nadge. 
Najib. <clears throat> whenever we get the vetoes let ready, and whenever they're ready, we'll have our first game of the best of five on the upper bracket side of things for the open qualifiers. Hey, thanks for the follow, MLM fam. It's the Clem fan, but it's the MLM from chat fan. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Apologies to the players that wanted to be covered that I couldn't. Like Cuckoo, who's been staying up late. All right, we're in our first game. <laughs> of the best of five, top bracket side, whoever wins qualifies. Then we're on to the lower bracket. And those of you who fought hard and are bummed if you got eliminated. Old Dave does have just a little bit of say, I believe, in the invitationals. I could be wrong. We'll see. Spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Data C. Representing Team Super in the red, it is Trigger. And his opponent in the upper right, from Korea, in the blue, Give it up for our Terran player, Mr. Percival. P. Civil. All right, we're going for a low ground opener from Trigger. He's expecting Hellions. He's just going like, to go, you know what? The heck with it. We're going to possibly see a 1 1 1 with Hellions. Percival uh, may just go to a 1 1 1. We'll see. Alrighty. Well, other than that, looks pretty standard from our Terran play or from our Protoss player. It is going to be a one-one-one from Percival and Trigger going for a post gas scout. A little later, scout. He's going to look for proxies. Look at Trigger using his game sense. He had his spider senses tingling. He's going to be right on uh, some of it, but he's not going to see a proxy one-one-one there. He's going to look around for the proxies first. Unless, of course, he decides to proxy himself, which would be funny. No, he's not going to find any here yet. Checking all the localized positions for proxies, or as many as he can, and is going to go Nexus before core against the 1-1-1. So that Reaper could potentially get a lot of value. All right, there's the factory follow-up. We just got three on gas on two different refineries. Now we had a little swap arena, so we had enough gas. Get that factory down in the Reaper quick. Why do so many people that play StarCraft hate on League of Legends? Uh, I've always done it as a meme. I played my first day of League of Legends, and I really can't take the game that seriously. Maybe I will one day, or, it, you know, if I like it enough and I can cast it, I might be interested in it. But it doesn't seem like I can see... Mechanically, it's just not as demanding of a game. It just doesn't seem as fun of a game overall. It seems like fun with friends, but it seems a lot more casual. I don't see that. I'm not at the point where I see it as as difficult of a competitive thing. By the way, that was not a Reaper wall. It's a Stargate opener from Trigger. Uh, we are going to have a Hellion before Widowmine, so, but uh, Widowmine certainly could get out in time. It is going to be a Reactor from Percival. So... Uh, we could see phoenixes, but curious to see if we get an oracle or phoenixes. It is going to be a phoenix from Mr. Trigger. Darn, I was hoping to get Trigger and Cuckoo. But yeah, the community, it's a different game, though. Personally, I'm just not a MOBA guy. But yeah, that, the rumors, I was told not to play League for my friends that play League, too, by the way. They're like, Dave, it's so toxic, don't do it.
Listen, listen, chat. The only legends we play in this chat is Rage Shadow Legends when Dave's doing a scam, all right? I mean a sponsorship. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I, I'm not joking. I might actually play. I, I might actually play it someday when I'm actually like out and about and on the phone. Just just from having done that uh, event. Okay. All right, it's gonna be Marine Tank follow-up combat shields being researched before stem. A couple phoenixes going out for a scout and get a worker, but have to be careful. It's a lot of Marines and the Cyclone. Is going to get some hull damage on one of the Phoenixes. Third Phoenix going to go join the small little fleet step forming, and it is going to be Phoenix Colossus from Mr. Trigger. So that's going to delay your third quite a bit because he's got to get his saturation, then get the gas saturation, etc. Presumably is immortal. All righty. Phoenix is going to try to get some presence. Keep an eye on things. Have to be mindful of the cyclone. All right, Trigger setting up for his third base behind it. He's getting the observer first. All right, Phoenixes are going to scout the push. Oh, he's going to lose a Phoenix. That's a rough time. It's so early. Okay, he's going to wait and pick up. Try to pick off some reinforcing units. Oh, he's going to scout a boys pull. He's going to pick up an SCB and a Marine. Funnily enough, I'm not going for the tanks because the tanks are too well defended at this point. He's going to pick up the SCVs behind, uh, but the Immortal is a ways away. Oof, this could just be over. There's only three Adepts, a Sentry, some f shield batteries that are not complete just yet, and the Phoenixes that are out. Immortal is not done yet. This looks like it could just be over for Trigger. I don't think he can hold this. Trying to get some of the Marines done. This Cyclone still lives. The Immortal is just going to pop. But the battery with overcharge is going to fall. Uh, there are some... Well, another shield battery is about to pop, but he needs to keep this alive. Gateway's fallen, which is a bunch of the production. And the Phoenix is not able to do anything because they have no energy and are going to die to the Marines. Okay. Some Zealots are attempting to be morphed out. Phoenix is out trying to debate some uh, damage from the... Both the Zealots and the Immortal. Okay, Fe okay, okay. Siege tanks lifted for a bit. That does buy some time for Trigger. You can't even get a Robo Bay at this point. Percival's being relentless, continuously pulling stuff in. And, well, he actually does not A move for a second. So I don't know if that was lag from Korea or what. Trigger's going to keep eyes on this, try to pick off a few Marines, and he's chasing it down with one. Immortal stim is about to pop though, and that immortal has hull damage. I mean, you can't really stim those marines though. They're like paperweights after. Okay. Percival is going to escape with a lot of the army, just a few battered marines. And I don't know why Trigger's continually pushing out now. It's just some immortals and three phoenixes. Okay, he's going to take a third base. I think he's just trying to debate him back. Trigger just now finishing up Robo Bay. And uh, is going to use the Phoenixes to delay some of the production. Ooh, five racks and a third CC. Actually, it's not. Yeah, it's a little late on some of the other racks because it was 1 1 1. So it's just a 3 1 1. Well, 4 1 1. He was going to. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird game. But we're going to see some dead Phoenix. Oh, well, one dead Phoenix. First Colossus coming out, but because of that nasty push from Percival. Uh, immortals were forced. The Robo Bay was delayed. So, consequently, extended thermal lance is delayed. Charge is on the way. But, damn, there's nothing really here to hold this. Damn, Marines make this a bit of a trouble for just Immortals and a couple centuries. Shield battery coming. That third base is going to have to be canceled. And Trigger looks like he's in a rough spot. Oh, but these are all Marines. Force field going down means the Colossi can do good. But the pickup was great. From Mr. Percival. Oh, this pylon's going down too. Okay, Trigger should just cancel this battery. Cancel the battery, Trigger. It's 100 minerals. Ah! It'll be 75 at least. He's going to posture to try to take this base. Very unlucky for Trigger. He's against three bases now. 
is going to send the Phoenixes home, which are just paperweights at this point with no energy. Some hull damage. Yeah, they have a little, but it's not really going to help too much. Now that Marauders have joined the fight, this is extra scary too. The two tanks are going to clean a lot of this up before for the sentries. One immortal left. Some adepts. The desperation adepts are coming in. This game's looking pretty over. Charge is finished, but uh, adepts actually buying some time. He's using the adepts. He's using the adepts. Wait, did he cancel charge? The adepts kind of tanking out the immortals. That's that was actually an interesting call. One would mind the snipe. Another is going to fall. Oh, his trigger. He's gonna have to cancel his third if he wants to try to stay in the game. But he needs a third to stay in the game. It's cope. We're on copium right here, folks. I really don't see Trigger winning as much as uh, Friglodite as I am. He is down in workers, he's down in army supply, he's down in a base, he's down in uh, virtually everything. Oh my goodness. This would... I just don't know how Trigger could win this game. I believe it is over. Observer gonna scout the push and potentially some more might get scanned. Trying to hide it in here. It's gonna see the rocks getting broken down. Just like the dreams of Trigger winning game number one. Thank you, Hubsea. I am not playing Amazing StarCraft 2 every day. But we do have some great games. How you doing, brother? I'm saying, I actually, I was thinking of you. I'd like to plan our interview, our uh, podcast series, our next one, the Protoss one. I was thinking of having you to get a game plan together and see if we can get us interviewing Trigger and Nina together. Because being that they're there for my second segment of the podcast, <clears throat> if we can get them to. For funsies. Trigger said he would before, but that would be ep epic as shit. Like, you can't get much more Protoss memes than that. All right, Traeger's trying to buy time. Oh my god, if he can hold, then he's proven me wrong. He's got a third base behind this. He's still got an uphill battle to fight even if he does, but he's doing about as goddamn good as he could, and I, we're... Well... Now there's Widow Mines in here. This base looks like it is going down, though. It all would rely on Hulk. Absolutely... Destroying yet saving everything. There's a oh, blink is done. Yeah, trigger is gonna lose the game with the third. DD is called in Percival. Moving on. Game number two with a point. The only thing amazing about these games is the players. I'm just kind of here like you guys are. All right. You're wonderful. We'll get Hop. If not Hop, I'd like to interview you on a yeah. if not. Thanks for the follow, Ravenous. All right, we're on to game number two. Sorry, the ASMR stream has began with the green tea. I got to remember to, that my oven's on. Chat, can you remind me that my oven's on? Anybody that's uh, one of the regulars that plans on sticking around, and if not, God help me. All right, let me just switch this. Okay. Down a game, but not out in the red. From Team Super, 
It's everybody's favorite Protoss Canadian. Get wrecked, Maples. It is Trigger. And his opponent in the upper right. From South Korea. Oh. And up a point. Just kidding, folks. It is Percival in the blue. Can Trigger take it back with a 3 1? Are we going to end up into a five game series? Because we got a lower bracket as well. And I am losing internet again. That is unfortunate. Dear Spectrum, get your shit together. All right. Welcome, Panic New, and thanks again, Ravenous13, for the follow. If you're new here, smash that follow button. You got an extra Prime sub laying around, appreciating. Guys, if you want to help out these tournament series, this is a $600 event. Several others in OSC, the online sports championship. You can help out by typing help, exclamation mark, help, OSC, and it will take you to the Ko-Fi page. For sure, Hapsaya. Yeah. An indirect shout out to my Protoss meme buddy who's way better at the game than me. Do I like the movie Heat from 1995? I don't believe I watched that movie. To my knowledge. Nemesim. To answer the question. It is just going to be a expand from... Mr. Percival, he's going for a Reaper fast expand adept on its way. That Reaper is making its way across the map. Let's see what the build is from Trigger. I'm guessing it's going to be a Twilight. And probably Blink. All right, Reaper's going to go back up in through the natural up to the main. Adept's going to be out chasing it away with the shade. Yeah, he's going to be out right on that Reaper. Stalker's making its way in. Bomb is activated. Oh, Percival, the great Mark Micro target firing the probe that had escaped and took the long journey back, the scout. Your oven isn't... Uh, Hop, I actually got some sleep, and yes, the oven is on because I want to cook some damn chicken, all right? I want to cook some damn chicken. So I'm going to start that shit. Between... Uh, between series to the lower side. I'm caving for my temptations to order tacos. And stick with planned dinner. Okay, Adept going to try to shade in here and get some information, but is not going to be able to. wake up memes <laughs> you know I was tired enough yesterday where damn that I met in oh my god you guys you guys all right Traeger's gonna get a nicely timed third base uh, considering everything he's got going on blinks about 60% done robo is gonna finish it is only one gateway though so a little greedy from Trigger on production just yet but he's got it all timed out that's way he gets his third base. I don't think it's going to be that early of a push. So he should be in good shape. He's anticipating Widow Mine dropping. Well, that's what it is. Should have enough stalkers to deal with it. Will he have the information? Widow Mine drop just going right in here. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, I think that it's going to make its way in. Oh, trigger. Timing it out. Blink's not quite done yet. Oh, if it was. Give me a head start. But if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, you know the rest. If you watch my stream. Oh, no, that... Is getting a little more than would be ideal for Mr. Trigger. He is going to clean up the rest of the Widow Mines. Medivac debating. Oh, he knows he cleaned up all three Widow Mines. Only three workers for three Widow Mines. Uh, I would say that's worth it in trades. Okay, Trigger going to follow up with the Robo Bay and Forge. So he's going to go right into Colossi, probably. Gotta love it. I think that's a, a smart move considering he's got blink and he can get charge. 
Uh, just with a little bit of pressure, he's going to see the medevac return home. And, well, Percival. Looks like he might be doing a drop. Oh! And it's unscouted. What a big brain play from Percival. Going for a drop and a raven. Taking, a, taking this out of the book of Beon. This is 100% a Beon maneuver. Robo Bay's not even finished, and with the, not a lot of production back home, there's nothing to defend. So this drop is going to... Well, the Raven and the drop could potentially hit, like, a freaking freight train. The Observer there is going to scout this side. Uh, trigger does have a moment. I almost feel like that was lag right there for Percival. He's so on point. And I know it's very hard for Koreans to play on American servers or, you know... Or Europeans, for that matter, sometimes. East isn't too bad, realistically. It really truly isn't for uh, NA players on the East Coast. If you're in the East Coast of Europe, it's not that bad. From West to East, it gets rough and et cetera, et cetera. Charge, extended thermal lines at plus one on the way for Trigger. But Trigger had to make some decisions. It was a beautiful decision to recall. Another auto turret's going to be down, and he's going to have to sack the Stalker. Oh, is he? Oh, he's going to lose some mining time. He's going to clean up the auto turret a little bit, so he's going to be back to it there does have some stalkers defending this observer getting out of position okay he's gonna go for a counter blank no let's right, take a look we got a defensive tank or two. Oh wow four siege tanks more medevacs coming and the stem combat shield and plus one finishing up for our terran player this is looking very rough oh look at that medevac micro getting out of vision trigger unable to react has to pull the boys uh, first stalker looks like it's in jeopardy. Does blink it back. Trigger is in a bit of trouble. This tank push. Oh no, the four stalkers. Okay. Well, Trigger is Mike going on other directions. And oof. Trying to find some value with him. But he's trying to buy time as well. Time is of the essence. Two Colossi are out with extended thermal lance. Plus one should be finishing. There's a couple charge lots here. Oh, if Trigger gets this plus one, this is going to be pretty nice. Yeah, he gets it. All right. Unfortunately, there is pickups. And let's see, that's a lot of tanks. Colossi are huge for this, but yeah, he needs to back it off for the tanks. Does save one of the Colossi with some hull damage. But he cleans the rest up. Percival going to his third base, not getting orbital. But he has a massive army still, a lot of marauders. Damage Colossi for Trigger. No warp prism, uh, so he can't really reinforce. He's going to go try to get some damage, but oof. No concussive shell yet, though. Okay, medevacs activated. One getting sniped. Beautiful surrounds from our Rodos player. He's going to quit up the medevac. Consequently, a lot of the units, Colossi falls, but all the SCVs do fall right there with it. There is an observer with this, so the Widow Mines will get cleaned up behind us. This is actually going okay for Trigger. He cleaned up all the tanks before. Cleaning up more workers. Five workers falling behind us, probably from that Raven, I'm guessing. And the Stalkers going to be able to do God's work. Trigger getting all sorts of damage on the other side of the map. Now with a worker lead. Uh, Mules be damned. There's the Raven. Oh, that's if he gets a Raven, that's huge. Yeah, that's an incredible counterattack from Trigger. 25 workers down behind us. Another Colossi. Four Zealots being warped in. Uh, the Widow Mines are your trigger. Needs to back the heck off, though, in a moment. Beautiful Blink Micro, though. Does he activate another? Yeah, he's getting a little greedy here. Oh, does lose another Stalker. I mean, it's not really greedy. The trades were certainly worth it, but he is going to lose uh, this last Stalker as well. Okay. Damn. Trigger could take a fourth base behind this and chill after he musters up some units. Losses in favor of Trigger. Who has a 20 worker lead. Ooh, Trigger even sniping one of the mines. Ooh, that observer looks dead though. And a nice surround with the zealots. Oh, he almost, yeah, he's preventing him just like a sentry force field. But without the observer, he has to be careful the widow mine because there is a lot of zealots here. Oh, nice splits though. Trigger's gonna jump right back on this. Oh, a beautiful job from Trigger. Well microed and very well played. Al Pacino and De Niro. I may have actually watched it. 
Now that you say that, when you mention the actors, sometimes I'm thinking of the movie. I'm pretty sure I've seen it. Nemesim, you're going to have to message me in Discord this stuff, all right? That's how I remember stuff. That is how I remember this stuff. Hey, Google. Set timer for 15 minutes. Hey, Google. Set volume to 10. Don't pick on me. So at least I will, at the worst case, I know I'm going to have to make them wait a minute because if this game takes longer, I'll at least remember the oven's on. And we'll have to make, the, I'm going to have to take like a five minute break to start to get stuff together. All right. And here we are on to game number three. The score is 1-1. Spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of Waterfall. Give it up for Trigger in the red. He's Super Trigger from Team Super. And his opponent in the upper right, in the blue, our Korean Terran, Percival. These guys bringing us some hot games. Nina and Percival was really good, too. I'm curious to see how the lower bracket and the games we didn't cover went. Because all the good players... Right. And our first series we covered was a banger as well. Thank you for that, da Damaraz. There's not much I can do while I'm casting, unless I just like left it following the camera, you know. If it was like a random last second Dave tournament and I was drunk, I'd probably just go like do my thing. But I'm not doing that. It's very unprofessional. All right, so it's the beginning of the game anyway. I probably could just do it, Kappa. No proxy racks. I gotta find out if it's a one, one, one. Hmm. I agree, Doug. Oh my gosh! Right, next is going down after core for trigger. It's gonna be Reaper expand from Percival, who's gonna get a little delayed from the probe. Nah, not really. Actually, it's not the timing yet. I like to hide the probe then come in and attack the SCV. Ah, uh, did he force that a position? Nah, I don't think so. Any little uh, nuisance victory is a good victory in my eyes. Okay, Reaper's going to start crossing the map. Probe's taking some hull damage, so that's going to be the targeted probe from Percival. All right, Adept is on its way with the Chrono. The Reaper is going to make its way in. Before that, let's see what we got going on. Adept is out, and the Reaper is thwarted. He's going to have to run away. Ooh, Adept chasing it down. Wait, 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 wait. Reaper sees the Adept going out. Stalker on the way is going to pop, but this Reaper could potentially catch a worker or two. In passing. Nope. Ooh, the grenade does help. The Adept is going to make its way in be just before the bunker is done, but he's going to be unable to get much damage on anything else. He's not going to be able to delay the CC. Oh! Almost! That was so close from delaying that CC. Enough that the Reaper ended up going back home. That's actually pretty cool. <laughs> the SCB chilling in the bunker still. Oh, man, that actually uh, did did help Trigger out a little bit. Funnily enough, Trigger just sent it. Oh, my God. He's like, well, that's a huge victory. We're just going to send the Adept back home. If it scouts the Reaper at the same time, that'd be funny. Phony, phony. Stalker is going to scout the Reaper, though. Unless the Reaper decides not to go up there. Yeah. Stalker's right on it. And it denies the, the grenade. Reaper's going to try to stay, escape. 
is going to regain some energy, but the adept is going to finish it off. Stim and combat shield started. Blink's on the way. A robotics facility going to finish. And an earlier third base this time from Trigger, who is on two gate. Blink. Trigger's on point this game, actually. Percival has had little nuisances getting in his way, but he's doing just fine. Everything looking pretty good. Jay Trigger's going to scout all the Marines. It is going to be a three racks opener from Percival at that. So this could be a little rough. You know why it's going to be a little rough potentially? Blink's just finishing, but Stim and Combat Shields will follow right behind it. Uh, with the It's a delayed plus one at least, but that could be quite rough. Trigger is going to shade in, and maybe he just noticed that the blink of an eye SCV is going to be... Hmm. Well, this push is going to be scouted now. Forcing a stem would actually be really good with the adapt. That would have been funny. Like, nobody would do that at that level, but... All right, Stalker's going to be out. Trying to catch some damage. He does notice that combat shields are done. And, well, it's only one Marauder in there at least, but he's going to blink back. Does lose his Stalker in the process. Retreating to batteries that aren't done on either side. Oh, no battery in the third. He's going to make this a rough fight. All relying on blink micro. Pylon's going to go down. Marauder in the back, and I help this fight quite a bit. But there's two batteries to help trigger out a little bit. Going into a Robo Bay right behind this. Concussive Shell finishing up. It's going to make this extra scary. There's a lot of Marines behind this, too. The trigger's going to be on the offensive, trying to pick off some units. Gets a Marine. Ooh, with the stem. Trigger's going to pick off a few other Marines, but Trigger is seems like he's overextending. Yeah, that's a huge overextension. Speaking of extension, we have extended Thermal Lance coming behind this. Oh my god, Trigger actually getting some good shots. Being very patient, the Observer helping right here. Oh my god, it's just out of scan range. Or now, well, now it is. Okay, he's trying to debate him. Ah, look at that. He's going to force another scan if he's going to lose the Observer. <laughs> the little victories in this game that can be so funny when you're observing. In the battle, not the war, but it does contribute to the war. Because we're on game number three and it's 1-1. Okay, third CC is going to be built on location from Mr. Percival. All right, behind this, we do have Charge just now going in. Yeah, well, it's been going for a bit, but, you know, is going to time out pretty decently. Trigger's got to keep buying time. Damn, he keeps trading units pretty well. Is losing a few Stalkers, but I think this is... It's safe to say this is in his favor. Army size actually now starting to favor Trigger, and income advantage drastically in Trigger's favor. So... Trigger is taking a tip. Those trades were really nice just with the Stalkers. So he's bought time for a bigger army, a more powerful army. But we don't have any Forge. Hmm. We, I would have liked to seen a double Forge behind this, but Trigger's going for overwhelming numbers. This is going to be 1-1 one, one for Terran, though. So he does have time for it, but pretty soon he's going to want to drop them. These Stalkers have done God's work. Five kills on this one, two on this. One on this, one four on this, and the ones that died got so many. Okay, it's going to be a three Colossi push with a War Prism follow-up. Charge is completed. A couple centuries. And, well, it's going to be a double a, a push from Percival as well. Guardian Shield is going to be definitely big in this fight. A couple Widow Mines are going to make this a bit of a problem for Trigger. You don't have an Observer with this army. He's going to split some Marines out. Oh, no. Nice blank, though, and... The, yeah, that's how it cleaned up. There's a lot of Marauders, but Trigger's right on top. It's, oh my god, he gets all the Marauders! Cleans up two Medivacs. Those are empty Medivacs, so guess what? Trigger's in an absolutely fantastic spot. Doesn't want to lose the War Prism, though. GG! Trigger takes it. And moving on to game number four. So the score is 2-1 in favor of Trigger now. Let's heck and go. Great series. Let's see what's been going on on the other side of this. 
Eric Flyer Cuckoo? I wonder how, the, if, how they're doing. Game Marinos. Let's see what's going on otherwise. Come Nina's doing. Alright. Moving on to game number four. Spawning in the upper left hand corner of Moon Dance in the red. Mr. Trigger. And his opponent in the bottom right. Give it up for Percival. We got Mr. Blue Percival, Mr. Red Trigger. No proxy racks yet in this series, but is that going to change? It's Percival after all. We shall see. We shall see what happens, folks. All righty. Woo wee. Double gas opener from Percival. He's going into a 111 trigger looking for an SCV out earlier for proxy factory starport. It's a good map for the uh, float in widow mines, but you don't usually see that at this level. Oh man. Right. And yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a harassmatas. With the probe, he's just getting a scout. He's not going to be able to escape. Trigger being damn annoying with that probe, though. If he forces a mule off, that'd be a huge. I don't think you can, actually. Can you? No, you can't force a mule off. The mule goes over the SCVs. Uh, Depth should be out by the time the Reaper goes, even though Moondance is a little bit shorter of a rush distance map compared to some. Actually, with the cliffs and the pathing, yeah, the Depth's going to be way out of time. All right, let's see which side Mr. Percival is going. Yeah, beautiful timing from Trigger. Is going to scout it. Cancel the shade. It is going to be grenaded though and oh the probe chases after the reaper there is no a bunker though so the adept actually gonna catch it oh not gonna be able to get the kill i like that trigger was right behind it with the probe stalkers in position for the wall trigger gonna try to come across whittle mine is canceled you're going he's going right into a marine tank but what indecision from percival i think he's really tired he had made a mine, canceled, made a tank, then canceled, then made a mine. So that bought Trigger some time in any event. <laughs> this little push here was just for the Adept. The Adept's not out. Okay, it's going to be a blink opener from Trigger. Going in for another gate. And Warp Gate's going to finish up here in a moment. Percival really wants that Adept, but so far the Adept's not came out. They made his retreat back after. No, it doesn't look like it. He might just go with a push. Yeah, it's going to be a Marine Tank push with a medevac. Okay, Trigger getting a battery. Robotics facility growing down on the low ground for part of a wall. Kind of a tough call to make if you haven't gotten any vision, but uh, the Adept's shade's going to be on cooldown. It's probably going to be insta-killed. Yeah, look at that. Percival's right and ready for it. 
this is stimulus so oh a marine tank liberator push it is the token widow mine drop this is a dirty build trigger getting some hull damage on the widow mine uh is gonna okay be able to not yeah the medivac gonna be there in time trigger is getting out in all sorts of positional issues He's expecting more Widow Mines in it, and they're not there. This is the biggest mind game from Percival. He's going to wait for a couple tanks. Uh, yeah, if he saves the Medivac, that's part of the push, too. So, notice he's not being too greedy with that one Widow Mine drop. Saving the Medivac makes this push all the more deadly. Adept and Observer are going to go out, are going to be absolutely huge. Um, He might even want to can If he sees this... Hey, Google. Stop. God damn it, I'm gonna we just wasted open time. Liberator going in the back. Oh god, this is gonna be absolutely dastardly to deal with. Uh Medivac and Mine Die, I believe. Just the mine, the Medivac survives. I'm embarrassed about that, but guys. Gotta take care of business. Oh! That said, the Medivac does go down, so it's something. It certainly helps a bit. Ooh, SCV is killed in the push. The bunker gets eliminated. However, the stalkers are going to be in harm's way of the two tanks. There's three more SCVs there. They're going to try to build some bunkers. Uh, Mortal coming down is pretty nice. Third base going down for Trigger. Liberator is deflected. Let's see how many workers went down. Ten workers went down, though, for Trigger. Definitely not looking the greatest for him. Oh, there's the tank Raven push coming up. A lot of bio. Another tank. That's going to be three tanks and some more bio reinforce what was picked off and now with a bunker this is just damn annoying and the liberator gonna be annoying again is gonna be cleaned up though the liberator not gonna be part of the component of the army to another part to fight who tank is in range of the battery but it's out of juice okay triggers gonna try to go behind this but the bunkers there to defend the tanks ah the robo bay Decisions, decisions, but that robotic facility looks like as good as dead. Zealot's gonna help buy some time to try to get some pickoff for Trigger with the Stalkers and Immortals, but man, yeah, Trigger's between a rock and a hard place. This is looking a little rough. Robotics facility 100% gonna die. Trigger does have another battery, building another robotics facility. Tank is gonna take some damage. But yeah, he's got trigger pretty entrenched. At least trigger does have a third base of sorts. You know, you just have 12 patches, but that's actually not like as horrible of a position. Charge in the way, four more gates, and the Raven gonna go in trying to do some work. Stalker will scout it at least. He's not gonna be able to do much more than that. Trigger's still gonna have to pull the boys if he's paying attention. Oh, the stalkers on the side are gonna get eaten for breakfast. That's just too much going on for the moment. Double auto turret, so damn annoying. Man, Trigger's lost so much. Charge is gonna finish up, however, and Percival just gonna go back home. Percival just retreating backwards. <laughs> he's gonna regroup. He does have the army supply advantage. As we see here, significantly income advantage as well for the moment, but that's his mules. We've seen that in a mule spike. Trigger does have a disruptor, however. Colossi behind us, and a decent amount of charge lots. He catches this out of position. Does he get a Nova? Nova cost him a couple of zealots, but he takes out two tanks, buying him time. But he wants to keep this disruptor alive, if nothing else. Doesn't have energy for a. Okay, no, he does. He segments it with a force field, and he gets the Raven behind it, which has been getting more kills. Trigger has to be careful because of the tanks. The rocks here, the scan is going to allow him to kill the Observer, which was pretty clutch. There's Marauders, Concussive Shell finished. And do we get a Disruptor hit? Uh, not bad. Not a lot of their Marauders, but still not bad at all. Decent charge lot warping coming in behind us. Trigger's going to go reposition his army, try to go for a wrap around and take a forward base behind us. What a Chad. Uh, he's hoping to catch a base here. Fourth base going down for Percival, so... 
I wouldn't hate this for Trigger to take a fourth after all, if he, as long as he gets some pickoffs or damage. Oh, Zealot's actually going to try to run away. Does he get it? That could be a kill or a cancel. Uh, uh, it's going to be a cancel, but still does trade something and the Zealot's escape. Beautiful play from Trigger. You're drinking some wine. Oh boy, Skyler has to be careful. He's uh, he can't drink too much. He's got a little bit of an alcohol aller allergy, if I remember. Simba John, not wondering. I mean, you are you you do look kind of young, Skyler. Not gonna lie, and you are kind of young. Twenty three is not by any stretch of the imagination old. A Terran player with a little wine? Who would have thunk it? Kappa. Zalit going to go try to find some vision. And he's going to see that there's a couple tanks placed there. He's going to survive. Observer going to catch the push. Uh, this is huge. Actually, it's going to stand with the army. I don't... Yeah, Percival saw it. Yeah, how he repositioned the medevacs. Oh, the scan's going to see the disruptor, though. Very unlucky for... Trigger. What is fortunate, though, is he even has the tanks back at home. Oh, nice force field, but a lot of the zealots going to go down. But that was a beautiful Nova cleaning up a bit of the army. First of all, with the army supply lead, but triggers buying time. And considering how nasty of a push that was, is going to be pretty good. The one annoying Marine going to go in and potentially get a probe or two. Yeah, yeah no. Shield battery saved the day. Or the other probe. Just gets one. Okay, Trigger's actually getting a pretty scary sized army. And we got balls behind it. You might say Trigger's got balls. He's going double. He was going double disruptor production, it looked like. Yeah, because he's rebuilt that robotics facility in the same location as he originally had it. Zealots in numbers are going to try to push in here, but smartly he de disengages. He wanted to get a surround, but was unable to do so. Okay, let's see how this fight goes. Zealot's tanking some shots, but concussive shell, good unit. Not a lot of stalkers, but they're going to try to take a snipe at some of the medevacs. And this is where Trigger has to be careful. He's, yeah, there's tank seeds right here. Percival always has some nasty tank positions. As fourth base is there, as a planetary. Trigger going for a fifth. He see he knows what's going on, so uh, I like the play. Double forge behind this too for Trigger catching up on upgrades. So the two kind of equalizing out their ship weapons for Liberators and Vikings, for Vikings more namely. But okay, he's gonna see the planet there. He's gonna get a couple tanks. Is he gonna get this last one with friendly fire? Oh, does do a good amount of damage to it at least. But there's a push coming on this side. Trigger needs to cancel his base. Or somehow just end this army. He's going to try to do just that. Segments it off from getting any further damage for the moment. And saves the fifth base. That said, a fifth base is going down for Percival as well. Oh my god. Actually, I got the score wrong, chat. Trigger is up. Wait, didn't Trigger win the last game? Trigger did win the last game. I had the score wrong the whole time. My God. Perrin is going to be on copium after this going. Dave, you got our hopes up. All right. Army supply looking pretty even. Trigger with the knife's edge lead. It's going to kind of normalize our dark friend coming in. We're about to see a max out from both players. Some zealot scouting this out, though. And yeah, he's going to start trading into more disruptors etc shadow stride being researched 2 2 gonna finish for our protoss player oh, blind at nova this is scouted zealot's gonna come from this flank actually if he got the terran in a choke they can't pick up oh no the disruptors are all caught together and almost all of them are shot at once they're gonna have to burn out and trigger is out of position there's an army attack on two fronts trigger's gonna lose the nexus here he needs to try to save his mineral line and bases Disruptors clumped. Oh no, he's throwing his disruptors away. Trigger's worried about saving his base. He doesn't, he loses it, he rebuilds it, but he's gonna lose like all, oh my God, he only saved one disruptor. That was not the play trigger. 
Trigger's just gonna go all in across. What the fuck is this game? Charge lots coming in, trying to get some damage. Scouts the fifth base. Widow Mine is activated. Zealot's gonna try to take out this one tank. There's another on the other flank. He's gonna be blinked on. Disruptor's shot doesn't get any damage. Oh my god, beautiful Nova on one side. Trigger's reinforcing with the Disruptor replacements he had built. Doesn't want to fight in the planetary. Trigger does have a Colossi with this push for the moment. There's no Viking in production. It's a lot of Widow Mines. Uh, Trigger's gonna try to chisel away at this like double level wall. One of the disruptors is going to fall trigger. Has to be careful keeping these disruptors in. Try to zone Terran back. He does have the ability to raise the wall. Trigger going to re have that base rebuilding momentarily. Disruptor does clean up two of the Widow Mines. We see another Nova come. Another Nova is going to go take an awkward position to the west, but not actually clean it up. And Zealots and Stalkers pouncing on this. Trigger actually in a decent spot. Gets a ghost behind it. But his army supply is falling. He got a lot of damage done, but it doesn't matter. He's lost a lot of his power units. I think throwing away the disruptor before does he get an epic Nova? Oh, not too bad. 11 workers fell down behind this all together. Uh, Trigger needs to get an army supply up. He is going to muster some reinforcements and warp gates and some disruptors seemed like they finished up yet. No. Oh, there's the reinforcements. Trigger going to go try to get a planetary. Yeah, Percival's pushing out. He might be able to get a planetary snipe. Because the army is, if he, if Percival pushes away, this may just be enough. And the blank is there. Trigger is certainly going to get a snipe on this. That is one dead planetary. Would be nice if we get some workers or any collateral damage. There's a missile turret there. It's going to force a scan. Trigger saves the DTs. So let's scout the push. Uh, hmm. Nice disruptor. Does catch a few units. And Trigger should have enough. He Did he recall the DTs? He did. There's one uh, DT coming from the back. Trigger going to try to take this base. Cancels immediately. Uh, okay. Ooh, the scout, the accidental scouter DT might see this push. And just... Uh, uh, I don't know. Okay, we do have a Zealot DT army right here. Oh, oh, oh. We get a blink. EMP does... Show a lot of the DTs. Would like to see an Archon morph behind this potentially, unless he debates the army back. It's the Zealot run by over here with some DTs uh, is not going to find much damage. A lot of really used up energy medevacs over here. But a lot of the army Zealots and DTs, the Stalker, the Plank Stalker Disruptor Army on the west. Uh, oh man, Tr uh, Percival's army's right here. He scouts this, it lands. Trigger is going to get... Oh, he should have just went for the kill on it. He's trying to fight with the DTs and stuff, the Ghost, etc. I think he should have just instant attacked the command center, but the big fight going on over here into this other base, which is not a planetary yet. Disruptor's getting shot. I guess that was good decisions, except for DTs are so expensive. Trigger, I believe, takes it. Skyler, it depends. I mean, if you're two base all in, Skyler. First of all, does have ping as part of it. He has, uh, you can totally tell. All right, let's see what's going on on the other side. It is Percival on the lower bracket versus Nina. All right, I need to get my food in the oven, or at least part of it. I will be right back.
All right, folks, I am running some ads. Thank you, Hubsaya. I hope it counts toward the other ones I have. I need to start doing it. I have like three minutes at every hour, which is pretty dumb, but it's what they say for the... Let's see. You know, with all the stonks you get on ads. Oh, damn, it didn't have an option for the three minute. God damn it. I would have just done the three minute ad, get it out of the way. Uh, hopefully this will get rid of them for a bit. So after that, let's see. It is going to be the lower bracket side. Nina versus Percival. Hey Google, set timer for 40 minutes. Second timer for 40 minutes. Oops. Hey Google, cancel second timer. Look at Dave leaving this on here. It looks like you have two timers. So which did you want to cancel? The 40 minute one with 36 minutes and 54 seconds to go, or the 40 minute one with 39 minutes and 59 seconds? The first one. It's canceled. Whatever. I'm curious to see the replays of everybody after hoping to get some from Cuckoo and stuff. And then we have some previous series. Try to cover as much as I can tonight. I'm not going super late. Oh, it's Cuckoo. It's Cuckoo. Nina versus Cuckoo. How you doing, Sa Simon J. Riley? Or is it Simona J. Riley? Simona J. Riley. Whatever the fuck your name is. Welcome. Real professional stuff over here. I think this is a best of three in the loser's round. Winner fights Percival. And anyway, spawning in the upper right-hand corner of Data C. In the blue, representing Team Roddy, it is Cuckoo. And his opponent in the bottom left, representing License to Kill, she's back again in a PVT. Give it up for Nita. This is our first game of the lower bracket. Uh, best of three before the qualifying series, best of five again. And hopefully we get some replays of this. I might cast some more of it after people are interested another day at another time because we got more StarCraft content than even if we know the scores we want to see the cool games uh, rather than Dave Ladder sometimes it'll be the B-side cuts it'll be some good filler when I don't want a ladder and alright looks like uh, Cuckoo's opening pretty standard so far and you know with the low ground wall Uh, 
Nina getting the scout in. Doesn't look to be a second gas. Probably just going to be a Reaper fast expand from Mr. Cuckoo. And let's see what's going on with the harassment test. Nope. Just kidding. You baited. Nina's not going to be able to scout this now. She got her probe out. She was you baited out of here. And it's just going to be a high ground CC from Cuckoo. High ground CC reactor. Oh no, Cuckoo's not raising it. Oh, just kidding. He wanted to get some damage on that probe. The mind games have begun, and that bought Cuckoo some time. Nina, well, she's opening with the Stalker and Warp Gate. Let's see what the play is from Cuckoo. He's not getting an SCV out, so you know there's going to be no reactor. Or sorry, no reactor. Jesus Christ. No bunker. You can hear the hangar in Dave's voice. Not really. If I was laddering, you'd totally hear hangar by now. Uh, but that said... It's not the case. Nina's got two gas saturation. Nexus is about to finish up. It's going to be another stalker follow-up. Nina trying to play it safe. But it looks like it's probably going to be a 1-1-1 from Cuckoo. Could be a 2-1-1. Could be the two racks follow-up. I don't know. We'll find out here. We will find out shortly. All right, Stalker's going to try to take a fight up the ramp, but four Marines there are going to greet it with the high ground. Oop. Oh, Nina's going to take some hull damage. Does not want to fight up that ramp. Okay, it is going to be a 1-1-1. One, one, one. From Mr. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, going with the Hellion follow-up. All right, Nina's just going to go in full retreat. She is going into Blank Stalker's behind this, by the way. Second gate finishing up here, not being a greedier build. Cuckoo going to try to send the Hellion in, but Nina's set up absolutely perfectly for this. One Hellion ain't going to do squat. We're going to probably see... Uh, are we, though? I'm curious. No. We're going to see a Banshee play out of Cuckoo. Nope, he's going Raven. This is the Raven tank push. Okay. I thought we may see a Banshee, funnily enough. But it is going to be presumably a Raven tank push. Could be a Raven Cyclone push, but I don't think that'd be so good. Hellion still barely survives, hoping to get Nina out of position. Blink's not quite done yet. Tank's on the way. And second, Barracks. Going to do the Tech Lab swap, Reno. The dance. Everything adding up pretty good for Cuckoo right there. And there's his third Rex coming as well. Hit the tank flop. Potentially. Okay, maybe not. Cuckoo might just be setting up defensively here. You're certainly going to see that barracks move over momentarily in a reactor going down for the star port. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we are going to see stem first. Little Sim 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 City. Okay, Nina's going for a pretty big push here. She has not taken the third base yet. She looks like she's going to be in position two and is even going to clean up the Hellion. Cuckoo doesn't know that she didn't go for the other one. Uh, tank is on the low ground, so Nina actually is going to have a bunch of Marines here, but they're all unstim, and the Raven is going to see the Observer. Okay, Nina going for the Reactor, I believe, on the factory. Is going to get the Raven. Blank is on cooldown, but she doesn't even lose a stalker. I don't think she might have lost one, but that one has two HP. Now she didn't. She loses the observer though, but the war prism's back, so she can. Uh, she's trying to buy time. She's gonna blink back in and go in for more reinforcements. Robo Bay is the follow-up. Oh my god, she's trying to snipe some tech before getting some damage. I think she should have just picked apart the unit stem and combat shields are a ways away. No concussive shell, of course. Uh, just in build position. She's getting a lot of damage. And she has secured a third base behind this. It's about to pop. Charges the follow-up to the Colossi that are just started. And the Forge is finishing up here. Nina's in a fantastic position. However, 
Stim is finishing up here momentarily. Nina's going to debate in the front and try to go in for a drop in the back. Is she going to snipe the tank? That's a bold move to get it because of this bio ball. Cuckoo's actually playing it safe. He's not taking, he's not venturing too far off. Well, okay, now he's splitting his army. Nina getting five worker kills and counting. He's going to pick up all the stalkers and just back the hell up. She's almost saturated her third base. Cuckoo's not been able to take one from the damage. Ooh. Nina does take a tank shot, but does not find any value. Put up Colin and Tater Tutor, by the way. And Raven. Still here. Raven is still around. Ooh, looks like a double medevac drop from Cuckoo. He's going to go try to drop into the main base, which could be... No, he's not. He's just going to surround. He's going to hit from two prongs on these stalkers. Potentially. Maybe not. Yeah, he is. Oh, Nina is surrounded. Okay, she does have one path of escape, but is going to lose some stalkers. Is going to be able to blink away for a moment. And is in full retreat. Colossi have made their way out, so I thought that was going to be a drop. Nina does have this on like a watchtower either way. Charge is completed. Extended Thermal Lance, not quite done yet. Nina's posturing to take up a fourth, but not quite doing so. Is going to get a charge lot run by into the main base. Four workers have gone down. She saves three of the Zealots, though they are a little bruised and battered. Cuckoo does split off and get a little Marine drop over here. Nina with the Disruptor catching funnily. Just one Marine. Oh, no. One of the pilots is going to fall. Another sure to fall as well. Some stalkers pushed over here. Nina in position to defend. There's a tank in this army with the Widow Mine. Zealot does find this. And the Zealot has the Zealot like a watchtower. Nina's going to uh, take some damage back here for sure. She lost a couple pylons. Depowered the Robotics Bay before... Uh, not until before the Extended Thermal Lance finished. So she's... Yeah, she's pretty much done with it for now. Ghost Academy on the way and plus one infantry armor for Cuckoo. Uh, okay. He's going to load up some medevacs again. And his... Well, he got the push, so he's going to actually not venture out too far. Ooh, the Colossus and the Zealot's going to do a good job at catching that tank. Disruptor catches a Marauder, some Marines, and the Widow Mine is pretty good. He looks like the third base is going to go down. Cuckoo is very tired right now, let me mind you. Not to say that Nina is not the more experienced player, but Cuckoo is quite a good fighter. I'm a very big fan of the young lad. All right, let's see fourth base going for Nina. Nina is in a very, very... <laughs> Huge advantage here. Army size, you can just see it. The income advantage is there. That's with a mule, you could tell, like a mule session. Uh, hmm, Cuckoo, not with enhanced shock waves. I just don't see it happening. He just continuing to tech and upgrade. Widow Mine is going to go down before it catches anything. Disruptors and Guardian Shield activated. Oh, that's game. No. Okay, third disruptor is going to catch a lot of the army, and that is a G. One G to rule them all. And it was a big G. So maybe that's good luck for Cuckoo in round in game number two. Okay. Okay, we're going for EU for game number two. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Ah. 
Oof. Alright, and here we are. Getting set up here. Waiting for Nina to get in and such. Alrighty, folks. What are you doing, veteran gamer? Yeah, Cuckoo is any you. That he is. I'm just ch keeping tabs on myself here. Uh, it's hard. I have mixed statistics. Technically, it counts from yesterday, so it's hard for me to say because I had a delay before. Hmm. I believe I've already streamed for about well, pushing on six hours today, so probably gonna call it at least for a while before I'm gonna take a break to make sure I get a full dinner after this, and then if I do any later, it's not gonna be for too long. Made a at ping. I don't know. Which what, what are you pinging? What are you pinging in the Discord? I'm confused. Alright, here we are. Down a game, but not out in the green. Representing Teen Robbie, Roddy, it, it is Cuckoo. And his opponent in the upper right, representing License to Kill, it is Nina in the red. Kick some ass. Back to crappy battle in that tournament, yeah. The end game ladder tournament. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're gonna do ladder after or not. I might, I think I might try to break away from things a bit because I'm trying to fix my sleep. We'll see what happens. Cuckoo is not the one cheesing. Nina going for a proxy. She's proxying her gate. She's max packsing it up. It looks like maybe a little variant, but. Nina is max packsing it up. All right. Vel, here we are now. Probius McScoutius. Let me zip along here. I forgot to say, Nina's team is actually licensed to Keck, as Bang and I have decided. Zealot on the way. We don't have a Chrono Boost just yet on it. Let's see. She's saving it. And actually, the beauty is she's actually in a good position for this. Yep, yeah, she's Chrono Boosting it. She had the second pylon behind us. 
There can be two zealots. Yeah, she's gonna wait for two. She's trying to give it just enough time. The second will follow it right after. And Cybercore is finished, so yeah. The Marines are out. There it is, the Max Packs. It's gonna be a Stalker follow up, though. Not a Stargate behind it. Nina is gonna force, it's gonna debate this. Force a war with Marines and Zealots. But the Stalker is on the way. Some boys are being pulled. This uh, CC is almost done. But the fight ensues. Stalker is gonna be out. Cuckoo looks like he's got some practice with the Max Packs. He wants to finish the CC, and I think he's just gonna do that. That is a full health SCV. Ooh, Cuckoo gets it done. Actually, pretty good defense from Cuckoo. Nina does have an adept following up behind us. Let's take a look at the trades. Just four Marines for two Zealots. And a very battered Stalker. He's gonna be a Widow Mine, so Nina knows what this is. Is she gonna cancel the shade? Just after, okay, beautifully done by Nina. Uh, but she has to be careful. Oh, does get the Widow Mine, and she's in harm's way a bit. Second Stalker coming though is pretty nice for Nina. She's a little committed. She went into a Twilight behind it. Two gates coming behind this, because she knows she's likely to lose this gate. Uh, Widow Mine follow-up is gonna be annoying. Actually, hmm. yeah, Warp Gate's quite a way off. Quite, quite, quite a ways off. She should probably fix a Rally Pointer. That's a dead, okay. Not immediately dead Stalker. Blink is on the way. And Cuckoo is Coco, Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Getting attack lad. He did a good job, truthfully. Did take some damage on the CC, but it doesn't matter. Does have some Widow Mines in defense, but you know what? He's just gonna go for the drop. And yeah, Nina's gonna retreat, but the Stalker's Warp Gate's gonna finish up here by the time that gets there, and Blink is a ways out. Uh, let's see where Cuckoo goes for it. I would rather him go in the main. He should know that's the Max Packs, the two Zealots. Nina is gonna have a pylon right here. Where does Cuckoo decide to go? I hope he doesn't path right. Nope, he's going to debate over and go to the natural. Okay. Not hating it, not hating it, but Blink is almost done. And guess what? It's going to be scouted. The two stalkers are there. Warp Gate has just finished, and luckily for Cuckoo, Cuckoo is just going to back off. I think maybe his play was to go alongside around. Nina going for a third base behind it. Obviously a little delayed. Raven on the way. Stem coming. And there is defensive tanks out. Nina's not going to be putting any pressure out anytime soon. Shouldn't be anyway. Still, well, five stalker push. Very. It's a bit of a commitment right now, but not the end of the world. Actually, she's looking for the medevac. Medevac's going to debate around. And Nina is looking for that medevac. Does have an observer. Uh, is getting another one. Medevac is again thwarted around here. Nina Stalkers are out on the map. She does have reinforce, reinforcement capabilities. But you know something? What she doesn't have at the moment is anything to scout this Widow Mine drop going in or deny it if he goes and does it. Cuckoo, Cuckoo. Go for it. Shift click Areno. Do it, buddy. We want to see that medevac drop. Oh my god. Okay, nice snipe with... The, actually, that was a brilliant play for Nina. Uh, there is going to be an auto turret, though, and Blink is on cooldown for a moment. She does pick off a few stock... Uh, Marines, rather. And is going to go back and be a little greedy after the auto turret finishes, I think. That said, Widow Mine drop. Uh, gets no kills. Only the... Wow, two kills. That's it. And... Ooh, actually a few more. Was it just one more? And Nina's trying to pick off some units. Funnily enough, we have an auto turret on fire. Raven barely alive. And Nina's keeping the pressure on charge. It is finishing up. Stem is going to finish up combat shields momentarily. Nina has three bases. Cuckoo looks like he's in a bit of trouble, but he's going to go out for another mine drop. He's just pumping out those widow mines. And against Zealots, I don't hate it. What we don't have is a lot of marauders. Yeah, he's researching concussive shell, though. He's starting to pump them out. Bunker is salvaged. Okay, we're going to have a supply depot. 
Supply de pro. As another widow mine's gonna be drops gonna be attempted. It's gonna be scouted by the pylon. Nina's most most of her army just all over on the side of the map. Raven is certainly looking like it's gonna go down in a moment. Nope, not yet. Hoping to muster up enough energy for another auto turret. Nina with a sizable force. And Cuckoo hoping to get God's work done with this widow mine drop. Three widow mines are sure to get something, and there goes a whole mineral line behind this. Uh, Nina actually. Yeah, she has lost some workers. In fact, 13 workers in total have gone down. Beautiful mine drops. They are going to be cleaned up ultimately. Medevac does live for now, but I think it's going to be finding its way right into the stalkers. Uh, nope, Nina doesn't really care that much about it. People will go back across the map. Medevac escapes. A decent hold from Cuckoo, but he is going to drop racks and try to get a high ground CC a little later. It's about all he can do. Does he have any upgrades behind this? He does have plus one. He wasn't able to get infantry armor. But he is going to get rid of this pesky pro proxy. Which is at least some production for you, I guess. All right, Nina going into a robo bay. Forge just getting dropped right now. So she put a lot of pressure on. And she's supply block, too. Cuckoo with the larger army is going to go push out. She doesn't have any power units. It is a decent amount of zealots and stalkers, but a lot of battered units. Some sentries will help. Uh, potentially, Nina does have an observer, but guess what? Oh, no, Cuckoo. You could have killed it. Unfortunately, the observer is not killed in time. We do have some widow mines behind this, which is actually nice. She can debate a good fight. The observer sees this, though. Oh, man. Cuckoo really wants to get rid of that observer. Because the Widow Mines are being a pretty big component. She, he's probably just going to lose that Widow Mine. He's going to land his third CC. Nina saturating up, taking the other gas. And that is all. Ooh, Nina with the Observers. But guess what? That Raven's still alive. If she, if the wrong... There's just a little plot twist here in the having. It could be a problem. That could just be dead, but oh no, the disruptor here is gonna catch a widow mine. Beautiful! Oh my god, you couldn't ask for a better anti-armor missile, but Cuckoo asked thinks he has to be careful. It's only one Nova. Oh man, that's very unlucky. Cuckoo. Uh that would have been worth that was like the entire army anti-armor missile. And shock waves on the way, but that disruptor is second disruptor is gonna be whiffed. Another off cool on Nina's in Disruptor 30. But damn, that was very unlucky. Felt he couldn't take an engagement there, which was smart. The Disruptor did follow up, but... That is... Something. Okay, Zealot does activate the Widow Mine, and... Yeah, the Armory is not done yet. It will be finishing up soon. And Shockwave's coming. Cuckoo did remember to get his uh, plus one after, and he's getting another eBay behind this. You know, just getting her double forge, so... Eh, plus one's finishing four. She's just playing with, like, very disruptor-heavy army going into extended thermal lance after. Yeah, I think Cuckoo is going to try to toss her to... Hmm, actually, I'm not really sure. Okay, we got a little drop going on down here, but Nita's army is mostly over there. Uh, Nina... Does not kill that much of it. And Cuckoo posturing out with some Widow Mines at the same time. Oh, they're clumped up, and that Disruptor is going to kill four. Forces a cancel in the fourth base, however. Nina is scanned here for the drop. Cuckoo's just buying time. Cancel in the fourth was pretty good, so it means Cuckoo's going to drop a fourth of his own. Uh, Nina's starting to lead in supply, though, because, the man, that was a very unlucky Widow Mine drop. And the Observer, well, sees the Widow Mines here. Uh, Cuckoo really can't get a drop in over here. It's fully, he is fully prepared for it. And with the battery and cannon, it's going to delay some of this. Okay, Nina kills the, or sorry, Cuckoo kills the observer. Uh, is going to fight off a zealot in the middle of the map. There's another observer here. He's going to scout the widow mine. Yet again, ghost with enhanced shockwave. Oh, missed the. Oh no, he misses. He was going for the battery. 
very unlucky for Mr. Cuckoo. Okay, so Nina is down on workers, so that means she's got a bigger army too, like our Terran player. But uh, is going to be a bit more committed because of the lack of a fourth. A Cuckoo could take some great fights. Nice EMPs. Doesn't get the Colossi, but gets the entire gateway army on the westward flank. Scan is going in ahead. Does not see anything right here. Right, Cuckoo does have a scout or widow mine out of position of that observer, I believe. No, I, I think it's just in touch of it. I'm not sure. Is reactivated. Gonna get the one probe. Eh, that's not what we wanted to see. Cuckoo forces yet another cancel. But doesn't have like a huge army over here. And Nina's army is definitely leading. The ghosts are good, but. It's not a shit ton of bile for what Nina's got right here. And this is a certainly a tougher position to push into. Cuckoo's done a great job of uh, denying her fourth base, though. It's 13 minutes in. Nina just now getting it up potentially for the last time. He's She has enough units to uh, get it, but it's a wild game. Yeah, he can't even take this drop. Oh my god, that's so much static defense. Cuckoo gonna blanket EMP this. Trying to take care of some of the static, get some of the army. Oh no, the ghosts are in the front. Cuckoo is doing his best to be a nuisance to deny a fifth now. Uh, he's going for a fifth base. Nina's gonna try to... I guess she's gonna probably go for up here. Zella is gonna find the Widow Mine. Okay, Ash, no, she's gonna take that side. Observer goes down in the center. Okay, Nina's gonna go try to fight here because she's got a lot of disruptors. Both players maxed out. Nina with a larger army supply. That's damn scary for a Karen player. Uh, but he, let's see Cuckoo's production, actually. I'm curious to see. He is at eight racks. Just the one factory in Starport. I wouldn't hate to see... Now that he's getting a larger economy... Maybe another starport go down and a fusion core for advanced ballistics. Okay, beautiful split from Cuckoo. Nice anti armor missile. It is mostly stalkers, but still, uh, oof. Getting a sentry to two force fields are activated first, but very well done by Cuckoo. And that center engagement. All right, 1-1 one, one going down for... Or sorry, not 1-1. One, one. It is 3-3 three, three for our Protoss player with 3-3 three, three for Cuckoo. The game's pretty even, but Cuckoo's got a couple more CCs going down behind this. Uh, tough call. Cuckoo actually has more workers than Nita. So Nita, consequently, with the larger army supply, but basically she's got to rely on killing him, I think. She just doesn't have the, the bank that Cuckoo does. She's a gas bank, but... Ooh, Widow Mine actually helps a little bit. Uh, Planetary Fortress also helping a bit as well. Oh, Disruptor does not catch anything. Cuckoo with excellent army control. Ooh, I almost thought he was going to lose that ghost, but no. That is one full energy ghost. The Atlanta EMP does on some of the Colossi. And he's going to fight on two fronts. Doesn't get... Oh, wow. He kills a Disruptor. Not only did he dodge the Nova, he kills it. Hey! Hey! hey. Who wants to have some fun? Hey, Florencio, thank you for the raid. I hope you had a good stream, my man. We are doing the OSC Masters. Guys, make sure you give Florencio a follow. The man, the myth, the legend, my brother from another mother. This is the OSC Masters Cup number 146. Open qualifiers. We're on the lower bracket side. Guys, make sure you give Lorenzo a follow. And it is Nina versus Cuckoo on game number two. For those of you coming in. It's a two-minute delay. So apologies for that. Hope you had a fantastic stream flow. All right, sensor tower is going to be killed. Planetary Fortress is going to help, but that's so many units. It's going to be out DPS. Disruptor, not going to fully kill it. And Planetary does aid some before it falls. There's extra CCs, though. 
planetary forming in the bottom right corner of the map. Oh no, that's gonna be stopped. Cuckoo just doesn't have the DPS to save it. He can afford to lose the bases, but wouldn't would like to see him keep the workers now that he's down on workers, but Nina's going for a fifth. This is just a crazy fight all around. The Vikings are gonna help against the Colossi, but the thing is, there's still a decent amount of stalkers and the disruptor account is crazy. Oh my god, Nina missing on all the disruptors. Vikings landing actually gonna help. GG is called and Cuckoo takes game number two. Right. All right, guys, give me just a minute. I think that was it. Wait, what's going on? NA. to do something we're gonna have a minute where i'm gonna be afk i am gonna be afk for a minute as we get started off after the introductions to go rotate the chicken And give the cats some treats. You guys can bear with me here for a minute. It's match point. Spawning in the bottom left-hand corner, representing Team Roddy in the blue. Give it up for Cuckoo. Mr. Terran Man. And she's deadly, she's dangerous from license to keck. I mean kill. It's Nita, the yellow. On game number three, match point, and we are gonna follow. The first probe we see go across the map. I'm gonna follow this, because it looks like we got a proxy coming. Bear with me. Right, and I am back. So we get to see a force third base with an eBay block. And yeah, that was some of the best casting I've done all night, guys. Wouldn't you agree? Didn't even have to say a word after the intros. It was self-explanatory. We had an eBay block. And uh, yeah, not a lost. Nina took her third base. 
Cuckoo is going for a high ground. He's going 3cc behind this. What a madman. This is a crazy game. All right. Is he going to go for... Nope, he's going. He's going for two Reapers behind this. Oh, my God. Nina, a little out of position. She's worrying about the eBay when she should be worrying about these double Reapers, which she didn't know about. Oh, Cuckoo not finding any damage there. Does not kill. Oh, she gets one of the Reapers. And Cuckoo cancels anyway. So he still has a Reaper out on the map to be annoying. At this point, she could just split up the Stalkers, but... Uh, is not. She's going to thwart away this Reaper. Another Stalker going to finish over here at the Reaper wall. But, uh, no, she ain't having any, but Cuckoo's going to be forced away. But a greedy 3cc build, 3 racks from Cuckoo. I, I kind of like this. From our Terran player. Playing extra greasy, like the chicken that I'm making. Hey, what's going on, Sephiron? How you doing, buddy? Just had to get a start on main course of Wiener. And, okay. Reaper is thwarted again. Look at what a mad lad he is. Saffron, wouldn't you agree with me? If you see this two minutes from now. 3cc, three, 3 racks. On one gas. Oh, buddy. Nina not going for her third base just yet. She's going for speed prism memes. Cuckoo going right into Marauders, getting that eBay down. He's got stem combat shields. And sorry about that, if you heard it. We got timers going left and right here. Uh, Reaper is going to find some damage and get yeah, just the one worker kill. A lot of information. He's scouting the robo researching. He's scouting that there's no, I believe he scouted there's no natural still. He may. That would be, it may be the one location he didn't check. It's going to be, I think it did just see this Colossus pop maybe before it died. Alrighty, folks. Cuckoo going to be mewling for days with his three CCs. Pumping out the workers. And, uh... Hmm. Stem is not quite done yet. A Colossi is... Or combat shield, so this Colossi is going to go ahead. But the Marauders out, though not with Concussive, can get a lot of damage done. Oh, God. Nina bullying, but going into the Marauders. Don't want to do that. She's just going to keep being annoying, trying to get some Marines, trying to get some SCVs, but the missile turrets are actually beautiful from Cuckoo. Ooh, she's got a great position, but is going to take some more damage from the Marauders. Marine tank, Marauder, going for the concussive shell. Yeah, absolutely. Is it greasy? Okay, we got extended thermal lance in the way, a couple more gateways, and charge finishing up behind this. Nina going for a big push. Cuckoo with the greedy build. Is mule hammer in a way. Alright, is he gonna get two? Yeah, there's this other two racks finishing up here. He's gonna complete concussive shells and plus one in a moment. Kinda awkward positioning on the racks though, for that one in the back, but he's trying to play it safe with the warp prison. Ah, goddamn, the speed prison play from Nina. So good. Still keeps the prism alive. Friendly fire from the tank is going to be a bit annoying. And oof, the Marines are the first things the Colossi sees. Unfortunately for Cuckoo, who's just going to land his third base uh, after using it to help him produce a ton of SCVs. So he can just start saturating that pretty much immediately. Cuckoo and a good... And a decent worker position. But uh, realistically, he could have potentially hammered a little more. But that meme build actually helped Nina a little bit. Going for the double forge follow-up. Is going to try to play extra greedy again with this Colossus. Pick off some units. The bigger thing I'm worried about now is the Marines. Because Stim and, well, yeah, but Cuckoo knows just what to do. He's sending the Marauders first. Yeah, they 
out range, but... All right, so we got two tanks coming. The tanks certainly should help. Yeah, that that is one dead-looking Colossi. Nina behind this with disruptors, a lot of charge blots, and she's just massing more. She does have another Colossi out on the map. Is going to save the warp prism and the Colossi. Well, she's still going to be being annoying, using it like blink stalkers. It's blink speed Colossi. Which is even more annoying with extended thermal lance. Observer going across the map. And yeah, Nina's just scouting around here. Going to take her fourth base here. In just a momento, potentially. Because she's bought time. Actually, she has the army supply advantage, even with that greedy 3cc build. Worker and army supply damage just from the the meme to open her. Why Nina Boldy? Well, because, well, she's about to lose. Oh, she swapped it for the Disruptor in there, but he's going to lose the Disruptor. A little less expensive than the claw side, but this one's pretty damaged anyway. Still an expensive loss for the Warp Prism, but it's gotten its value. All right. Nina with some excellent map coverage. Cuckoo, and not so bad. Considering he's been getting bullied with that prism. Uh, but, eh. He's been able to mule a lot in this game, so... Economically, that's how he's built differently. So now he's got some more workers. Uh, needs to take care of an army before he can get that fourth. <laughs> yeah, because Nina's got a pretty close army supply. And Disruptor clumps up against the rubble. Ooh, even the tank takes a huge hit. This is not looking good. Not looking too, uh, too good. Scouter Depot is denied. Okay, Nina saturating base is getting 2-2 two -two on the way now. Cuckoo is top is upgrades getting some vikings does have ghost does he have enhanced shockwave he does uh needs to land some good emps okay gets a couple on the front does lose a unit in the front of that push okay he's got a medevac that he's gonna lose but is getting some high ground vision the viking is taking some damage archon's pushing on the side but ooh, i would i don't think he had an emp available but that would have been a beautiful target for emps right there those archons is going to heal some units. Uh, Nina going to posture on the southeast. Taking a fifth base behind it. Cuckoo trying to get his fourth up. And he just can't get his upgrades yet because he's just now getting his armory. Uh, going with a little push out with some of it across the map. Trying to see what value he can find. Nina with observers in the middle of the map and the units. Oh, Disruptor does connect on to the sensor tower. Not catching really much otherwise. Oh, but that one uh, does catch a few units. Sensor tower not going to be repaired. Ah, uh, not like this. Boom. There's one dead sensor tower. Uh, zealots pick off the reinforcing marines. Or rather the uh, little contingent of marines there. Cuckoo going to try to go around to fight this, but it takes so long to walk around in the pathing. Because uh, you, you have this whole base here to skip around. God, Nina has such a massive army right now. Cuckoo has to spread with caution. As he engages the disruptor right there. Oh no, Cuckoo. Mistakes were made. Widowmind's helping a bit, but the disruptor is going to help clean up the tank eh, with the zealots. That base looks dead. Cuckoo is not going to save it. He almost, almost, almost had it. These Vikings were in front. I think getting a claw side went to help the fight cause, but I think it's just going to Nina. Yeah, it's really, he's trying to fight it out. But you know what? GG is called and Nina takes it.
Cuckoo did a fantastic job. But that is eat there. Let's see. Percival Nina. GG's very well played by both of them. Now I'm going to take a few just in case. I think we have another best of five. Bear with me. We have a best of five to follow this up on the lower bracket. All right, I guess we have had a good amount to cover here, huh? 69 viewers, nice. I am just going by whatever is the case. How you doing, Flood Advisor? That is always nice to hear or see. Let's see here. Uh... Your cat brought you a mouse? Nice, Sibba John. My cat's trying to eat chicken. I had to feed them treats. Charlie's probably gonna be bugging me in a moment. Okay, moving on to game number one of this best of five. And here we are. Getting the lobby started. Your cat ate the whole mouse? Oh my goodness. My cat, you'd believe it or not, Charlie, if I leave him out in the hall, to have a hall before outside, he will actually leave presence of a cat and just leave it at the doorstep. 
Uh, or the presence of a mouse, I mean. Jesus. Feels old, man. All right, anyway, spawning in the upper right-hand corner of Data C. Give it up for a Percival in the blue. And his opponent in the bottom left from License to Kill. Give it up for Nina in the yellow. All right, Percival going on out with the SCV for a proxy rax in game number one. Very potentially a proxy rax. Hmm. Interesting choice for location. And let's see what flavor of proxy racks it is. Double gas looks like it could be. Hmm. Nah, he's just going for proxy reaper. It would appear. I was kind of hoping to see if we'd get that like fake proxy marauder. Your cat bought. Your cat caught a pillow and sat on it until it submitted. That's funny. Hey, what up, duck cuddler? Cuck cuddler, yes. The Reza memes. Tater tutor. Welcome, welcome. All right, SCV is moving about. And there is going to be the bunker right in the face of the pylon, but that SCV is sure, sure to die. Yeah, I think that was a brazen move from Percival. He's going to lose that. He is pretty certainly going to lose that SCV. Okay, that said, Reaper is out. Oh, wow. He's going to micro up back. He really wants to keep that SCV alive. It's so close to dying. Stalker's on the way, though. Uh, Reaper is going to be annoying and buying time for the SCV to live, but you know what? It's not going to be... It's going to be really tough to micro this, even if he gets the bunker up, and he's not. Damn, that's so close to being done, so that just cost Percival time. The probe being annoying, scouting this out, seeing the factory follow up. It's going to be a tech lab. Barracks flying home. Two Reapers are out, though. Percival going to be annoying with the two Reapers. Del Naga Watchtower taken. And, uh, yeah, it's going to have a starport following that factory up after. High ground CC for Percival. Because he knows he doesn't want to risk losing that. Oh. Stalker is going to be in position and get a good a bunch of damage to a Reaper number one. And guess what? Second Stalker going to finish it off. Nina going into a Twilight Council behind it. All right, that said, we have a Widow Mine. Is it going to be a single mine drop? No, he's going two Widow Mines to open up for the follow-up drop. Nina chasing away the Reaper, uh, trying to posture to take a third base, but Reaper's going to back off. I don't know. Actually, never mind. It's going to be another gate. Nina going to wall a little. And yeah, that's about all she wrote right now. <clears throat> Alrighty. It's a yeah, it's actually a two minute delay. By the time you hear this, it's two minute delay. I can't remember. I might have lowered it to one minute. I think it's a two minute delay actually. All right, that said. That said, some of this is going to be cleaned up. Oh, the Reaper actually debates for the Widow Mine drop. Mines are, well, two going to go down there. Okay, repositioning from Percival. I don't hate it. He's trying to be as annoying as possible with these mines. He can't mine anything for the moment. There's going to be enough stalkers. Oh! A stalker and just one probe fall. Okay, yeah, Nina's just gonna clean the rest of this up. That's a lot of lost mining time for Nina. There's absolutely no mining but some gas going on. For our Protoss player. But Percival 
Definitely be set back a bit because of it. He's going to have a siege tank out. Some marine stims on the way. Plus one on the way. And then we should start seeing combat shields and stuff. But he's a little behind, obviously. From the cheeky cheeky opener. Raven going out to get some damage. Uh, Nina just kind of getting some, getting herself together for some pressure. Observer going out. And that Raven is going to wait for, possibly wait for two auto turrets. And behind it is going to be, a, oh my god, a marine drop with a raven. This is a very cool play from Percival. He's certain to find some kills here. Raven, wait, he waited so long though. Nina actually caught on, got a worker and then, or a stalker, then pulled off. So it would target fire the stalker. She bought a lot of time. And Nina is, uh, yeah, she only has two stalkers to defend. But she's getting ready to blink up there in the tanks on the low ground. Stem not quite done yet. She can actually clean up. She can clean up all these Marines with confidence at that. Marine drop back here is going to be a bit of a problem. Killing a gas. Uh, but yeah. Nina taking a great fight over here, though. Is going to blink away, catching some SCVs. She needs to from what the damage was done over here. Ooh, doesn't get the blink. The afterburner too good. And Stem has completed. Tank is going to siege. Nina, I believe, anticipates this. Does have some really battered stalkers, though. Can she blink forward? Oh. Is going to snipe the tank. Does take another hit. And it's going to lose some stalkers. Uh, she has to be careful. Lost the gas there. Does have a third base. The Raven is going to be still alive, out, and annoying. So I think this is a smart move to move back. But what, loss, what losses did she take? Nina trading definitely less favorable than Percival. Okay, two stalkers putting some good pressure on the Raven. It is almost on kill. Uh, and Nina is going to be back with all of her stalkers. Getting a Colossi eye out. I would have liked charge, honestly, if she could have before, but just because of how things were playing out. Robo Bay is smart, but. It would have been something, uh, you know, charge seems to take a while when you need it the most, as quick as it is. Compared to blink, etc. Alright, we are going to see a little attack swap Reno. Third CC being made at the net from Percival. Percival is going to get a kill on the battery that's overcharged from Nina. Nina with one Colossus. This is like a pure marine drop. So, that said... Percival has to be a little careful. Does get as much damage as he can. Nina getting a medevac full of marines. though is pretty nice. Does clean it up. A little light on gas and heavily supply blocked for the moment. Nina is facing some serious problems. She's even e she's even even on workers. How funny is that? Extended thermal lance was also denied behind this. Raven does. Oh, it's just the auto turret. Raven still lives. Raven in chat is giving life to this Raven. Oh, no, not like this. Another auto turret trying to get some kills. It's shut down. That Raven is just so damn annoying. Percival's plan is very well. Nina doing the best she can because this is a very cheeky build out of our Aaron player. And he is starting to gather up some Marauders going in with the Liberators. I think Nina tipped her hat to the Robo play a bit, but she's going to get some more gates. She's split up with the Stalkers. This is going to be a push. But guess what? The Observer is going to see the push coming out. At least parts of it. Medivac's going to lead. Okay. Oh, no. If only those Medivacs were caught. She could have sniped a couple Medivacs, potentially. Disruptor, though. Good unit. And Stim saves it. Loses the Observer. Very unlucky. Charge is coming. But, yeah, she's been she's trying to... Get this army to move and take that juicy disruptor it wants to eat. But it's not going to get it. All right. And here it is. Army supply. Nearly a two to one lead. I need to start to get some stuff warped in. I got to take a probe out to look for some movement from Percival's army and Zella as well. Is going to push and kill a pile on Nina. Needs that, by the by. This isn't even Percival's whole army, is the scary part. Okay. 
Oh, you know with the blinks. Uh, just falling short of the Metavax. Beautiful pickup from Percival. Sell on the Zelnaga Watchtower is going to go down, but he's exactly where everything is, at least for the moment. Percival now taking the Watchtower. And is going to go right into the main base after the Raven chisels away at the battery number two. One Stalker going to meet its death as soon as this comes out, but it is going to. Oh, maybe not. It's the buy time battery for two seconds. Battery overcharge activated, but it's like on death's doorstep. If that actually does its job, that'd be remarkable. Okay. Nina target firing. Oh, she gets almost gets the most, one of the most valuable medevacs. Uh, Widow Mind in the third, they're doing God's work for Percival. Nina is just really on her back foot this game. She is just getting plus one ground weapons. Percival on double eBay with ship weapons. Uh, so these Liberators are going to be a little punchier, and Vikings, as she gets them, I'm sure, with the Colossi. Okay, Nina, if she catches this... Oh, one drop down. The other to fall. Oh, she didn't fight the units. Nice target firing from Nina, however. And, yeah, I don't know if she's eking her way through this a little bit at a time, but Percival's been so... Oh, never mind. That damn Raven. Did the Raven fall yet? Yeah, it finally fell here. Somewhere behind it, but what an MVP Raven. Another Widow Mind drop. Is this Percival or Beon? This reminds me so much of how Beon plays with the Raven with the Widow Mind drops, like as the game goes on at all different times. Longcock always cheers you up. Yeah, I need to put that ch chicken in the turned off oven now. It got a little overcooked, but you know what? It's fine. Oh man, beautiful Widow Mind shot even. Damn, Nina's got a rough start to this game. Number one of the best of five as they're both in here. I wonder if Percival stayed up all night for this, by the way. Me thinks yes. Ooh, battery overcharge. It's going to keep this Nexus alive, but the Disruptor falls short of the Widow Mine. It, it, she was just trying to get the army, but... Could have at least gotten the widow mine out of it. Yeah, this is looking very rough for Nina. Percival on a fourth base now. Mm. And widow mine is gonna catch a stalker and do some serious damage. All right. Army supply hugely in favor of Percival. Nina's still unable to get a fourth. I think she could have probably taken one behind this, truthfully. It's hard to because she's had to spend everything on army, but she's got to try to get something. And let's see. She's now going to catch up on upgrades a little bit. Yeah, Percival wasn't getting him. Enhanced shockwave just now going down that spot. Nina, some. Okay, I see a chance as this goes in. Okay. Ground armor finish for Nina. Ground weapon's going to finish as well. It's certainly going to help. And more disruptors. But the liberators, that's going to be the uh, the plot twist. Okay, Observer scouts this. Nina's finally going to be able to try to get a fourth at 14 minutes in the game, basically. Oh, my God. This is just such an unfortunate position to be in. And at this point, Percival's army's so huge, he can just take it the other side and go, surprise, we're over here too. But Nina has enough where she could technically fight on two fronts. And the Disruptor cleans a lot of it up. Oh, my God. Percival doubling down and forcing two Disruptors. Nina does clean some of the Widow Mines, at least. But it's the Ghost with the Enhanced Shockwave on the way that's going to be a bit of a problem. Nina is clumped up into a bit of a death ball. Percival splitting his army is going to make this a little rougher. Zealots in the front. Disruptor does get just a few Marauders in the back. Uh, Zealot's going to get hit by the Widow Mine. And eh, thought it was as good of a Widow Mine shot as that could get. A lot of the ghosts up here, though. So that's the uh, the juicier army for the Terran. But the army supplies are getting closer. Those Disruptors were paramount. Great control for Nita. Great patience to be able to stay in this game and not be just dead. Like, okay, this needs to be is where Nina needs to make the smart plays as well as Percival. 
because disruptor shots could just like make all the difference with how many ghosts are here. And that said, oh, nice splits. One of the ghosts is picked off from one of the Novas, and the Novas falling short. Some catching some units. Nina's army starting to fall. Uh, Colossi are going to take a lot of damage, though, from the Vikings. Okay. Weird, scrappy fights. I think maybe, just maybe, Nina saves this. Okay, wait. There's reinforcements. Nope, there's a fight on the other side. That's what's been going on. Nina saving a disruptor. She's taking out his... This is goddamn hard to control and fight. Let's be honest here. By both players. Like, they're both fighting on two fronts. Uh, obviously, a disruptor could totally end it on that type of thing, but the level of control from both players is absolutely amazing. And the level of map vision... Look at this. Nina is seeing where everything is as far as pushouts. Percival going through a six base. Nice disruptor is going to catch two ghosts. Beautiful pick for Nina. Absolutely beautiful pick. This is this is some serious Starcraft right here. Oh my god. Purification Nova gonna fall a little short. The other as well. Disruptor getting the mine and well we're gonna see a huge push out over here. Colossi EMPs ghost. Stalkers, oh my god, it's all chewed it for breakfast and you know what? That base is gonna fall with the fourth base falling. I don't know how Nina can do it unless she yeah, there's just so much economy for Terran so much army beautiful Nova's though stalkers taking good fights uh, She's gonna oh she couldn't ask for a better Nova. She needs like everything to count right here she, Her army supplies lower. She's down a base but like Percival can just re endlessly reinforce. Let's take a look at the production tab. Or sorry, the, rather the structures. Percival on eight barracks though so on. Oof. He hasn't even broke out the Liberators. That he was, he had him I thought before, but I kept mentioning that, but never got into him. I guess he canceled. It must have been a split second decision. Oop, Disruptor does kill that mine. <laughs> Finally, after the mine kills the observer. Oh, nice EMP. Does the disruptor connect? It does not. Oh, trying to snipe the ghost with the stalkers and everything else, but there's a lot of Terran here. That's a planetary fortress. Nina's got to know. First of all, just way ahead. Oh my god, nice disruptors. And the game trudges on as Nina tries to reclaim a fourth. Uh, Funnily enough, there's a Widow Mine even here. God damn. And Nina is not going to be in any, any easier time. Oh, she got plus three ground weapons. So, she is going to be facing an upgrade disparity. Uh, but at least has plus three, so I guess it's not over. She's resecured her fourth. Uh, but is going to need another base to supply this stuff. It is getting plus three armor. And she's just been taking such good fights that it is been helpful. All right, let's see. Decent disruptor there. Just constant. She just has so many disruptors still that it's making it very rough for Percival to do this. And when Stalkers and Archons and a few Zealots yeah, probably mix their kill planetary, you know you're in good shape. If she blinks on this, that's a free kill. Oh, my God. That's 400 minerals for Percival. Uh, Widow Mine is gonna hit a disruptor, kill a disruptor actually, but two. Yeah, a lot of disruptors going down. It's rough though for Nina. She needs like everything, but those are great. Great disruptors. Two ghosts going down behind it. And another disruptor. Oh, if that one hit, that would have been. <laughs> that would have been something, but Nina's not out of this. She's gonna take a fifth. After killing two bases, but yet another CC's floated over. This is just the CC printer over here. This game ain't over, folks. Plus three on the way for Nina. Oh, god damn. Just when you think it's like an over, over, this game keeps going and going. Fifth base is gonna have to be canceled, though, funnily enough. Yeah, I hope Nina cancels that. Yep, she cancels that. She's gonna try to chase this down. Bates out in the MPN. Just a few star zealots. Oh, beautiful disruptor, but she's gonna catch more of her units than his. Nope. Catches a lot of the units. 
is going to be able to reestablish this. It's going to be dropped to the main base, I'm guessing. Oh, no. If the probes were just there. Yeah, this is going to be a main base drop as there's an attack in the whatever the fuck base that was. Fourth, third. <coughs> Templar Archives is targeted as the main base push is going to go on. Nina needs to be in a couple places at once and is going to consequently try to be... The Nexus is basically just for Chrono and Recall at this point, so it's not really the end of the world losing it. Disruptor is going to fall. Yeah, it's target fired. And there's not a lot of Blink Stalkers right there. However, she has some here. It's going to get some beautiful target fires. Oh, my God. Great positioning. Losing that base wasn't as much of a travesty. He's trying to hold this one. Nina has some Disruptors and some Stalkers with some Zealots to defend. But is it enough? Oh no, she a little bit of Miss Micro forces her to lose a disruptor. But she has to keep this base, even though it's mining eight out of eight, she just doesn't have enough. Realistically, if she secures the top fifth base, uh, that would totally be worth in a trade. And this is just game number one of this series, folks. Holy shit. Behind it, it's just more of the same. Some Widow Mines being pumped. Uh, sprinkled in here now though from Percival uh, but look at him he just has so many bases though Nina is literally just microing her ass off to, to continue in this game like I am just damn surprised how she did that usually most Protoss players we've seen it happen just get, in this position just be absolutely bodied and even higher seated, higher, uh, higher ranked favorably on servers at the moment, players. But that just goes to show you how good of a player Nina really is. Uh, even after some time, the planetary does fall, even with all the SCVs helping it. Losing workers is rough for Nina. Photon cannons actually helping a little bit with the battery right here in the fight. But Nina's just going to go across the map, try to find some damage. But that Widow Mine, oof, is going to be a little bit annoying. Hey, Nina does not have a recall available. Nina, if you're paying attention, lands a juicy disruptor. Oh, almost two. Some zealots are going to help clean this up. Nina's just taking a fight to the other side of the map, even into planetary fortresses. Another falls. She needs to get some damage done, and she is. Nina now leading the army supply. Does she win this game somehow? I mean, it, Percival's on some rough hours, whatever, whatever. We all have excuses and facts. It's actual facts, truthfully. But, like, still, nonetheless, it's a goddamn good game from both players. And I, I don't know. It could go either way at this point. Clumpy Eggnog, welcome. This, oh my good lord, is this Nova Land even more juicy hits? Nino is just pulverizing. She has tipped the scales and is now able to secure yet another base. There's some Widow Mines over here being annoying on this side, but Nina's going to go expand on the side. Percival was really more heavier taken, but he's literally everywhere. So it's good that she has caught some bases in as many as she had, as well as the army. Let's look at the trades. God damn, what a crazy game. Nina's traded definitely way more favorably, but still, it's just insane to see this. The uh, in terms of graphs, we don't have WCS on, sadly. It would be nice to see the graphs right now, but we didn't have it in the lobby. It's quite all right. All right, here we are. And Nina can even, like, powerhouse through these rocks. It's crazy. Oh, no, but all the disruptors are in front. Zealot's going to buy some time. And move. She, yeah, the disruptors are what's keeping her alive. That said, there's a big push, and Nina's gonna lose even more disruptors. But a lot of damage, damage, damage. Medivacs, there's still two in the back. Oh, disruptor actually working against her now. This base is gonna go down. Oh, that sucks. Nina's focusing over here, but she should be looking up here because she needs these active bases for mining. That said, Percival is getting scouted. These medevacs are so damaged, and they're... We're talking marauders and potentially ghosts, maybe, some in there. Mostly marauders. Army supply in favor of Nina, though, but she needs to keep her production alive at this point. It has a dark shrine coming. 
Uh, okay, just some zealots here. He just gonna want to try to keep that Dark Shrine alive. It's a lot of marauders. Zealots get out of position for a moment. And Dark Shrine's gonna get canceled. Oh, beautiful cancel. Split second decisions for the DPS. That was not an easy maneuver to do. Nina gonna go try to take this base after, but guess what? I hope she doesn't drop her. Oh no! Percival's gonna see it and just pounce right in. That is one dead Nexus. I'm calling it now. Oh, no way with the army. No shot. Nina needs to go save this base now. Damn. It's such a close game. The worker count basically even. Nina is going to be able to blink and pick off some medevacs. Unfortunately, the one with the marauders still lives. But the bulk of her army is still up here. It's a lot of disruptors. And more of the other component away uh yeah nina could probably just push across she is gonna ultimately get a base still both players floating gas and nina lost her templar archives had to cancel the dark shrine i almost wouldn't hate a templar archives at this point dt's would be probably good for this time of it but just to have something for f the between the feedbacks she doesn't have Storm, and we're at a weird point in the game of economy. But I'd say feedbacks and archons would be quite helpful. Uh, Percival, actually, as big as this army looks stretched out, Nina has the larger army. Uh, and she's going to force Percival to come back together. He, she, he knows he's against the death ball. A couple sentries are out. This Disruptor's getting peppered left and right. Oh, beautiful Nova's. More disruptors behind this. Colossi taking some good fights. Another beautiful disruptor. Another beautiful disruptor. And another beautiful disruptor. This endless Nova's. But there's still so much bio. It's getting chiseled away. Nina recalls and does she save them? She loses one. But the hugest comp or the most core component of our army is saved. Nine disruptors. Nina's really trying to get this base up here because she absolutely needs it at this point. Percival uh, mining out down here, Mulin doing everything he can, trying to split off. He's going to have to expand down here pretty soon is what we're going to see. And I don't know. Uh, this base is even needed by Nina, but it, funnily enough, the cannon's not powered. She's going to try to save the workers. It, oh, man, if she lost so much of her army right there, though. That's the hard part. Had she kept a little more, dare I say it, I would almost say max out more because it'd just be such a death ball. It would be really hard to remove how well she's been controlling it. It would be really hard to... Oh, no, she does eat that. But guess what? Debated. Disruptor for a component of the army of Terran. Still Percival with the army lead. It's, it's This is crazy that she's gotten so far in here. Recall is not available. And Percival is going to push into this base. This base is even starting to mine out. She did get those Archons back. So somewhere she did sneak a Templar Archives in there, which was a good play just to be able to pump out anything. Uh, that said, we do have some Ghosts and Marauders pushing on this front, but the bigger component of the army going to the... Oh, the base that Nina needs the most. She's going to try to keep the workers alive because I guess if you're there, you're still in it. Zealots and Archons pushing in, but there's more Terran reinforcements behind this effort about everywhere. Not as many ghosts over on this side, but their ghosts are going to push on here. But those were not the greatest EMPs to use, but you know what? Man, those Archons tanking, and luckily for Nina, the ghosts were a bit away. However, this base looks like it's going to fall. And I think when this base falls, that could potentially be game, but I think Nina knows this game's been going on long enough. That Percival is getting mined out too. Even if he is, let's take. I can't show you the graphs again, but let's take a look at the income. Eh. To be honest, it's pretty close. We got long distance mining going on. Percival couldn't imagine being able to fly your buildings over. Space face, what up? Yeah, DTs actually could get some good work done behind, but realistically, I. It's the production. Like, all that could... What could hurt Percival more than anything would be the production. Because she's not going to be able to get the bases now as hard. But certainly the production. There is so many CCs between planetaries and orbitals. Oh, she's going to try desperately to get this. There's no Nexus to recall. Speaking of production, Percival's going to start wrecking on this production. And Nina is going to need whatever she can to win this game. 
That said, she did muster up a bit of a force. However, first will still with a lead in it. It's gonna make this difficult. She's losing more and more of her gauge. She's gonna lose her Robo Bay and Forge momentarily. Nina's just gonna base race, which you really can't. I really, she just can't do it. It's gonna get a disruptor. Once she sees how much is out here, I think that's just gonna be Ogre. Yeah, she's literally losing everything, all right? I don't think she can take this fight either. She's gonna try to, but that's like her last robotics facility. And yeah, nothing to shoot these two Vikings. Oh God, is gonna try to recall this, but hopefully not losing a Colossi. Yeah, this is rough. Down to the last gate in the Templar archives that I can see. What a crazy game. All right, I'm gonna put it on perspective for a second. I need to check out something. Oh, it's off. SCV ready. You want a piece of me, boy? Somebody, get me out of this mess. Boom, baby. Mineral field depleted. This better be good. Let's have a blast. Your forces well. are under attack. Sorry about that. My God, she's trying to cling on to this game. And I don't see it happening. There's just so much Terran. There's a lot of disruptors, but she's trying to get psionic storm. This is a crazy one. Oh my God, I'm zoomed in. Sorry about that, guys. I was totally away. This is just nuts. GG, and what a goddamn game that was. Moving on to game number two. God damn. Oof. Very sorry for the uh, stuff. I had to sneak some food in me. My food's get. I got to reheat it, and I guess I'm not going to have a full meal together tonight. <laughs> Whenever I'm done, I'm going to have to cook up some other stuff and reheat. All right, here we are. Spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Cosmic Sapphire. Give it up for Percival in the blue. And his opponent in the upper left from License to Kill. Give it up for Nina. Chad, I am sorry. Normally I can cast this long, you know, I'll sneak in some stuff, but we are at a point where we're zipping through stuff. And Dave didn't eat, so I had to sneak some, sneak some chicken at least, you know. Had I ordered food, I would have eaten. But I'm sure we're going to have a banger of game number two here. It's pretty crazy. 
All right, it's going to be a 1-1-1 one, one opener from Percival. And Nina is, is either scouting or going to proxy herself. I'm curious to see what her plan of attack is. We shall see. All righty. And, well... It's gonna be a little scouterino here from Nina. Nina going for a Nexus, it would look like after our core, just like normal. Nina's gonna see the 111, have the probe trapped. Uh, is not paying attention to it at the moment. All right, factory going down. And you know what? Probe is going to go down, but delays the Reaper from coming across the map. Going to be a Stalker opener from Nina. <clears throat> she does get a good scout, at least. Got a Reactor opener from him. Percival on his 1-1-1. Is it going to be Hellions to change it up? We will find out. <clears throat> or is it going to go Reapers and Hellions? Pro Gamer shirt? It's actually Programmer shirt. Not Pro Gamer, Programmer from when I was from when I was a coder oh yeah Skyler with the hub emote <laughs> oh boy all right let's see here it's gonna be a full 111 before expand from Percival all right and surprise, the Widow Mines. I think none of us here are shocked to see it. Not a one of us. There's no armory at this point. Uh, would be funny if... Yeah, he is going to go for armor. Oh, oh, Percival. Going to do Nina dirty. God damn. God damn, this is the lower bracket side, and yeah. Ooh, probe is going down. But yeah, what am I drop falling in? Robotics facility, not done yet. Ro uh, armory is going to finish up. Nina trying to get a pylon to scout this, but this is going to be dastardly from... First of all, is just outside a range of the unfinished pylon. But the pylon is scouted. Percival gonna go in as soon as the armory's done and bada bing. Bada boom. That's a very committed widow mind drop, but you know what? You know what? Oh my god, the carnage, the damage that Nina does not have an observer yet. Does she get more damage done? Oh, only one worker, beautiful pulls from Nina. In total. It's eight workers down for Nina. And guess what? She's everything here. She's hoping to finish this Widow Mine off right here. And the other gets two. Does she get the third? Ah, just in time, she saves it. Blink is about to finish too. Can she clear this one up just in time? Is the Observer going to make it? Yes, she is. Nina does trade pretty well considering everything that's happened. All right, so we already have a tank in production. We have a medevac, but not much else. She should just go for it. Or not, because you know what? There's another uh, medevac. She has another observer's posture for a third base. She's going to pull right away. But has to be careful. Does force a shot. She recalls. And that's a smart move. She's going to get the medevac. And it needs an observer, though. Observer is trailing behind. And wow, nice micro from Nita. She's losing a lot of lost mining time. She's getting a lot of lost mining time. Percival mustering up an army after all. But still, nonetheless, Nita's doing great compared to what it could be. Oh, that I don't know how much I agree with. And how are you guys enjoying the tournament tonight, by the way? There were so many other players that we didn't get to catch. Hopefully, I'll get replays from folks. But if not... Guess what? We're going to be moving on 
than those who qualified in the inv in the invites to this tournament. So, the all-stars of all the events, like the cock of the walk, the chicken man test opens, the Dave test ones, the Dan and Dave, all the Dave stuff, all the other events in general, Vulcan Cup, Legion Cup, whatever we had. I believe Alpha X and Apprentice Esports stuff. Platinum Heroes stuff, you name it. All the great folks putting on tournaments. We're gonna factor that in with OSC points. And... OP players. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys have been enjoying this. Damn, seven minutes in. Percival finding himself in a pretty good position after all. Just, Nita just kept de having to deal with uh, Widow Mines the whole game, so... She has lost mining time where she hasn't lost workers, so... In total, losing ten workers, that's not so bad. She's got Disruptors out now. She was able to attack behind it, but the late third is gonna suck. Uh, considering it's down if she loses it, so she's gonna really have to hold this. Right now, she's going to have charge, but uh, gates are finishing up, so she needs to get some trades here, even. Uh, the, wow, this gap's so huge. All right, Taryn's going to siege. Oh, no, the Disruptor is going to be instantly killed. That was really unfortunate. Uh, decent force fields, but Nina needs to retreat a bit. Does clean up a bunch of the bio. That's four tanks. Shield battery not quite done yet. Another disruptor has completed, I believe, way back there. Okay, Nina's gonna have to do whatever she can to take care of these tanks. There's a lot of bio one zealot coming behind this. Zealot's trying to jump on the tanks, but there's just so much bio behind it. Does clean up uh, all but you know, two of the tanks that do live. Nova cleans up all the marauders though. Get the heck out of here. Beautiful blank forward. And this is going to be mostly cleaned up. The medevacs do survive. Oh, Nina does a little bit of a premature blink. Uh, that said, our Terran player is secure in his third CC behind this. And plus one infantry armor is going to finish up. Nina down an army supply, but is tacking up behind it. Even with the losses. Being in favor of per... Oh, no. She actually traded just slightly more efficiently. Uh, Nina's going into the plus one ground weapons. Does have extended thermal lance, does have charge, does have blink, has a couple disruptors, is getting colossi and zealots. She's actually in a decent spot this game. Uh, compared to the last one, that was definitely a decent hold, but last game was just something special. Is she going for, I wonder what's going on down there with this proxy, because that pylon's blocking mining if she was to take the base. No, she is going to take the gold. She wants to get that greedy gold economy. Disruptor is going to be shot. Oh, false. Does not catch the Widow Mine. And she is going to get the Widow Mine zone back to Terran Army. However, this Disruptor is going to be stemmed and pulverized. Hopefully, she can save the other. Nope. Nice force fields. Jebated and Stalkers are going to be blinked forward with this after. Nope. Okay, she has to save this Colossi, though. And I believe the Disruptor should be off cooldown any second. Nice snipe out of Medivac. So she wants to debate Percival, and if she's... Anita is infinitely smart in this game. But if she wants to be extra smart, dropping a pylon over here to psych out a... Uh, to psych out a base would be huge, so she could just keep taking this gold. My guess is she's just going to recall off of... Well, she could recall off of anywhere to get the gold right away. But all oh, the doom drop with two liberators. This is just massive. Well, I guess one thing she could do would be just recall that main base as soon as this finishes. That's a lot of production. That's a denied upgrade. Is it dead forge? Jordy LaForge is taking it. Oh, unfortunate bull. And the widow mines are so annoying. Beautiful pickups from Percival, nullifying the disruptors. And Nina is going to be forced to recall anything. Down at the bottom, there's Widow Mines right there to greet, but beautiful blink. Percival is just everywhere, playing disgusting this game. The medevac still, no units really, all, all the units are clumped up in a choke away from the shield battery. If they were right there, that would have been another story, but Nova is going to be shot. Oh, falling just short, that's very unlucky for Anita. All right, she is going to get a warp in, Colossi looks like it's in a lot of trouble because the battery died. 
Nina gonna be trying to kill these medevacs. Percival securing the base, has a fourth base. Nina sees everything behind this, but she has four bases of her own. Oh, it's gonna be scouted by Percival on the back foot flank. Percival did lose a lot of men. Well, did he though? Oh my God, even a widow mine's still standing. So Nina wants to get mining down here, but really can't at the moment. Should be sending some workers saturated over there. Scouter, widow mine. All right, that's funny. Our Terran player is gonna go jump back. This is all gonna be sniped. Marauder is gonna be sniped. And the last medevac is gonna be sniped. However, the army's pushing here. Nina has some of her army postured at the third. Some widow mines behind us, of course. At the end, Percival loves his mines. Is gonna get some of this with the disruptor, or at least the widow mine. And Nina has cleaned up everything in the main. And she did not know that. But guess what? Beautiful blink from Nina. Or not blink warping. Percival backed up at the set right second. Uh, the fact that she has gold is pretty nice. It is oversaturated, but that is going to help her get back in this game. She's got a double forge behind this. She's got Storm coming. I think Storm is going to be a game changer this game. Uh, as long as she can muster up the army supply, which she is. It's equal on army supply. Uh, however, this gold base is not very defended at all. In fact, it's not at all. This is Photon Cannon and Photon Cannon. Natural is going to be exposed. Some feedbacks are launched. An Archon behind. Not really anything that can fight this too, too well. There's no Robo units here. Uh, but the cannon's actually going to help fight. Medivac's fallen. And Nina is starting to get enough army over here to take care of some of this. Drop is forward. But the huge push of the third is actually nasty. Yet again. Widow Mine's dropping. That could be very unfortunate. Oh. The one triggered. On the oh the disruptors not finding all the damage but doing pretty good. Losing the third, I guess, is meh. It's rough. It could be a lot worse. Photon cannon trying to fight without the stalkers. Imagine if the stalkers were fighting too, that'd be something. Ah, uh, okay. Nina needs to save her fourth though, the gold base for the moment. They might out quicker, but she's in need of it. Doesn't want to lose this observer, but she's going to. Oh, if it got friendly flare, that'd be worth. Nova falls short. They, uh, Percival just playing so well this game. He still has a drop in position in the main base. So Nina better not all army hack. Oh, she's out of position here. Yeah, she's down on supply now and has not been able to find the fortunate Nova she had in the first game. Still a banger of the series. All right, Nina has this observer out, which is showing all the reinforcements. And Percival has not pushed toward this fourth. She's going to take gases over here. Nina does find the Widow Mine. Consequently, this observer is going to see even this push. But the drop in the main again. Oh, my God. Does the Disruptor pop? At least it's going to go down anyway. The Terran is right on top of it. Uh, if it debated back a little bit, it would have maybe got something. But nah. That, that ain't getting sh Jack Diddley squat. Stalker's trying to fight some of this. Uh, but she's going to want to keep him alive for the medevacs. Does get... Uh, yeah, the empty medevacs are not cleaning up. Medevacs is always kind of nice. Has to be careful over here. Almost gets a disruptor, but not quite. Two liberators in this, but not a lot of stalkers. is very, very annoying. But is Percival going to throw away a liberator? That he is. Okay, this is reminding me of that scene of Indiana Jones, except for she doesn't blink the stalker back. Uh, Nina taking a fight over here. Get land the beautiful disruptor. Oh my god, most of the Terran army goes down on that front. The larger army is down toward 9 o'clock, however. Beautiful blink forward with the stalkers killing the Liberator. There was a Widow Mine to greet them, however, and more Widow Mine, speaking of which. Colossi trying to get some damage. Nova is going to launch and catch some damaged Marauders. Still better than nothing, I guess. Disruptor gonna catch the Widow Mine on the back. There's still just more and more Widow Mines. One even being placed as a dead body of a Marauder. Gosh, this game. Is certainly something. Your tournaments need a Percival, exactly. It's a... 
Like, Percival cannot be underestimated. And yeah, Nina is not. She's playing her heart out. That is for sure. There is no win. Oh, you got to try to get a fifth, but... Ugh. Ugh. This map. There, you guys are witnessing why I veto this map. I have actually several reasons why I veto this map, but... Oh, Novas! Do they get... Oh, getting some damage with those Novas. But she's eating a lot of EMPs. Does this last one land? Oh, that's what she needed, but there's still enough to take out the Colossi. That's a little scary. Medivacs are getting drained too, though. There's still enough of a more ghost is more of a problem, but... They're using e he's using EMPs on mostly already uh, depowered shield units. Need to jump in on these medivacs is huge though. Percival with like the CC fortress again. And she power her house her way back on the back foot again as we've seen in previous games. God damn. She does have some observers. Oh, she's not A moving. Oh, very unfortunate. She needs like everything and that was not the time to have that happen. Two more CCs being dropped. On top of this for Percival. She is going to secure this base for now, but Percival is going to push to gold, which is actually getting mined out. The gas is still good for quite some time, but it is going to go down. Yeah, Nina needs gas right now. She's making some Archons. It is going to recall. There's no battery. Hold the phones. The disruptor goes down, and the other does not catch anything. It was wrapped around the back. She tried everything she could right there to hold it. Just not enough, and the EMP is not going to help this end well. The that well that was a beautiful blink backwards and she's gonna chase down this army observer sees all that is to come on this flank so percival's trying to go take a push toward the fifth base nina managed to secure what's left of that other base but ultimately just gonna try to push in and pulverize at a decent army supply oh if she catches this there's a slight army for the planetary but nina can actually do it I think she can just get this if she takes some good fights. She, oh, the Novas! Everyone's sick. There's still a lot of Terran. And those Vikings are going to be damn annoying. She has to micro this properly to not lose the Colossi. She did just lose one. She retains the one in the back. Nova is going to be nice to catch some of the SEVs and zone back the army. Nina is backing off just a little bit over here. Okay, so she was able to save the base. Uh, fix the saturation a bit on the gases. Take this base. Uh, would like to see... I don't know. This is just crazy. What are the upgrades? 3-2. She is just getting her armor. This game, she does have Storm. Which we've not been able to see. I think she... Maybe she forgot to. It's hard to... Like, like Storm's kind of weird at this point of the game. Uh, Disruptor falls short. Is she going to start using some Novas? Oh, the observer that observer was MVP though. That, it certainly helped her for the entire game, uh, foreseeably. But there's gonna be just a oh my god, this doom drop. Is it at least gonna be? Oh no, she doesn't even see this see it with the zealots because she really needs these bases. Okay, wait, she's yeah, she knows what's up now. You know, isn't that far away, but it is gonna lose the base. It's a oh my gosh, this is crazy. She, okay, she started another base. Takes good trades on the jumps. Uh, Percival is losing some army, but Nina is going to get hurt on the production. That is double Templar archives. Double the Templar, double the fun. She's going to blank and catch whatever medevac she can. Unfortunately, none of the units are in them, but catches two. Not enough to really... She shouldn't cancel that with this. Uh, she, she might take some hull damage on the Nexus, but this Nexus down here going down is a huge problem. Even though it's mostly mined out, she still had plenty of gas again, and, and you still need that, obviously. The Morker's falling. Another Nexus trying to be taken. Obviously, she shouldn't cancel that, but she's pulled apart. Trying desperately to get anything to fight this. And, uh, you know what? Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no! The Widow Mines! Okay, Widow Mines are debated. Another Widow Mine. Percival with the goddamn mines, and he's got bases everywhere. 
Nina had to rebuild. Oh, wait. She needs to fix her saturation, potentially. Uh, but if she leads us... To Percival's actually thrown away workers now. He's so far ahead. Uh, plus three ground armor about to finish for Nina. But Percival got sloppy with the medevacs. That would have been probably the best thing that could have happened. Oh, that said, Percival got sloppy with the bio. Actually, decent splits there. Does she land this one? She's picking up most of the power units, the Marauders, the Ghosts. But there's still plenty more behind it, sadly, for Oof. There's still an, enough medevacs for a personal uh, personal escort of a sort of decent size army. A little contingent, I guess, when you're looking at what's going on. It's more medevacs per unit now and counting, but... That said, this is not a planetary yet. Nina needs to kill this. Every kill she can get. Actually, if she fought from this side, she can go toward economy. <clears throat> I want to see a manor base taken. She's, still, she's long distance mining the gold. Oh, God. Nina needs to get some control of her <clears throat> workers here. She's just starting to... Okay, Observer is going to lead the charge. Yeah, she needs to start doing this because these Widow Mines are so damn annoying. They've been like MVPs for... Oh, God, since the start of the game and that damn armory was made. Oh, the Observer, though. She needs to keep the Observer alive. It's not going to be alive for long. Oh, man. This fucking game, I'm telling you. Never seen a Terran Mac... I don't know, man. You must not uh, watch a lot of StarCraft, Skylar. Skylar, listen, man. Of course you would say that. We all know your st strategies, all right? It's two base or bus. <laughs> base Skylar with the two base all-ins. But Percival is so good in, in the late game. But so is Nina, realistic weeds. Considering what's been lost in this base, lost, it's all mined out. Nina's got to jump on this economy now and just push. But it's hard, easier said than done. If Percival's getting forced to throw his whole army away. Uh, let's see, how, where's he at? I almost feel like if she gets the medevac, she could have a better shot. She's mustering a bigger army up. Should probably try to take this base. Yeah, if she contends this part of the map. It is going to be... A oh, she used, like, every Nova there, though. She doesn't want to lose these disruptors, but that's, sadly, I think that's just going to happen. Oh, uh, nice blank forward to try to save this, and is going to clean this up ultimately, slowly but surely. She needed those stalkers, though. Now she's on her back foot on army. Killing that base was huge, though, and a disruptor is going to catch some of these units. Another disruptor to zone. Oh, man. What a banger. Banger of a series. I got to tease you, Skylar. How you doing, Cyhog? Welcome, everybody. That is new here. If you're new here and you like this, please smash that follow button. Dave is starving. But food is going to wait. I had to cheat a little in here to get stuff going. Until we're done with the event. Oh, my dear lord. This is crazy. What a goddamn banger. Nina sniping bases about the she really needs this and doesn't have a lot to fight it. He's lost disruptors. But it's not a huge well, it's a huge army overall, but right this army in the immediate. Ah, she's got she, Nina! I don't know what she was looking at, but she just did oh, she did not cancel that. Why are you gonna go build it while they're right there? Oh, okay. She's going to go try to be distracting. Or Nina. She's got to be sweating this game. From a cheesy opener to what we're into now. She has been playing from behind. Look at how many fucking medevacs there are. That's like... I'm serious. I almost feel like if the medevac count just got eliminated... It's only one star for it, so... Being that she finally got some academic trades. Uh, 
All right. I cannot believe this. This is the second late game in a long time. Damn. This is some goddamn good StarCraft. Okay. Percival gonna go try to take gold. This is hilarious. Okay, let's see. He's actually mined out of here. He's mining out of here. First of all, for how many bases he has, he's mined out of so much. So there's not a lot of minerals on the map. Nina needs to take what she can and just keep trading. She's kind of, she's doing it. Look at the supply. Nina may actually do it. And I'll be honest, what a well-deserved game if she does. It's not over yet. But Percival is starting to lose the income. I got to actually tell them next time I might make the lobby because we are not seeing the army graphs. There's no WCS. Which is a shame because these games are incredible. Where I wanted graphs, and I don't know about you guys, but oh, god damn, the Novas! This is absolutely crazy. Nina's trying to save this base, and if she does, she actually just wins it. I feel like she just wins it from taking that first what that like mined out gold base. It has a lot of gas, but I don't think that's gonna help them that much. Oh, the catch is like every unit caught in anything is just worth. <laughs> uh, she's smartly long distance mining that. It sounds crazy, but like that's why would you build a CC for that little bit of minerals? Okay, she's not quite mining out of this yet, though. Patches are starting to look a little thinner. See how it scouts the position of some of this army, and that's the bulk of it. Percival is catching up on army supply, but oh yeah, Nina has to be careful with these stalkers. Zoning Nova is pretty good. Both players really kind of getting the low econ. Oh shit! Right there are Widow Mines and Marauder, a Marauder or two with Marines. Not a bad little catch with the Disruptors. She didn't build... We don't see any DTs out. She did build the Dark Shrine. I, no DTs. And do we have high Templars, actually? That's what I'm curious. She is... It's getting to a point where the Ghosts are going to be too expensive. And I think Nina just takes this pretty soon. Yeah. Percival just doesn't have the economy to remax. He can certainly try to, but... There's just not enough minerals. Percival is mining... Uh, let's look at the income. Yeah, like... There is no economy for Percival. Now that Nina secured this as some static... There's no way Percival wins this. GG. Another 30 minute plus banger. Oof. All right. Percival is Omega dead for sure, guys. Hang on. They're going right into it. Jesus Christ.
I just asked them how like those two are alive right now. All right, moving to game number three. God damn. These are some of the craziest fucking games. Mike sounding very good. Thank you, Han Solo. Guys, on a scale of one to ten, one being like your cat casting out of a toilet with like a $5 microphone, and the other ten being like, we'll say like Steadfast, Cats, Bale, Wolf, Roddy, etc. How am I doing tonight? We're doing a good job. There better be some like negative sevens in, in, in chat. All right, anyway, spawning in the upper right hand corner of Tropical Sacrifice. Give it up to give it up for Percival. Uh, now I'm starting to get tongue tied. Had to sneak, get some food. And his opponent in the bottom left. Give it up for Nina from License to Kill. And welcome Thorn, by the way, Han Solo. Get you Westopoly, real Westopoly. And get you, you're funny. That is Cosmo Kramer. Can I get an exclamation mark Kramer in chat? You know what? I'm going to do it because this game, these games have been long. Please don't do these too much. I'm Cosmo Kramer, the yes man. All right. That is what it is. Excuse me. All right. So there you have it. It is going to be a 1-1-1 again from Percival. Something cheeky. Nina's going to be, God damn it, yet another cheeky game. It's a... You know, I'd, re I'd like to see Percival play like three racks or something. Just to change it up a bit. Because he's not just instantly won with Nina in either game. Both The first game was over 30 minutes. The last one just touched over 30. God damn. But thank you guys for the compliments. The camera is excellent. Thank you, thank you. We're finally getting some upgrades to the stream a bit at a time. Not finally. It's been, you know, these things take time. For uh, smaller streamers, you know. I have been streaming insane full-time hours. Skylar, you should just switch to Protoss now. 69, nice. All right. Anyway. Hmm. Oh, you guys are responding to my question. 69, 12, 420. All right, I like the 69s and 420s. The 12, I'll take the compliment. Negative 700 plus 800. I'm just giving it an honest rating. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, it's all in the mic and camera and the hat. I I'd like to give uh, my thanks, my special thanks to the hat collection. And also type 69 and chat. And Cosmo Kramer, the yes man. <laughs> and there it is. Hopefully Eddie doesn't get mad that that's in the... Uh, that's my drawing of Kramer, by the way, that I just did the other day. Actually, the other morning. That was my fifth stream of the day, I think, or fourth. I slept one hour in, like, 48 hours then, but now I actually woke up at a pretty normal time. I actually got up at 9, went to bed at a decent hour, and I'm hoping to sleep at a reasonable hour tonight. I might, I'm definitely going to be taking a break behind this. I should actually... I'm unable to call my girlfriend to say goodnight. Even these guys have been going at it so long here these folks so better with me alrighty I should have got tacos like you guys said would recommend it is the sure mv7x because I have the weight Elgato Wave XLR. So, <laughs> getting tongue twisted here. It's the Elgato Wave XLR is my uh, audio interface, and I have the Shure MV7X. If you just wanted to have a mic and an interface in one, just get the get the Shure MV7. It has a, a DAC built into it, basically. 
I would be just using my focus right, but I spent too much damn money on the waves. The wave XLR uh, is pretty cool. Uh, Salar for my needs, being that I already had a decent interface, the only reason I bought it was uh, because of Discord issues with the focus rate uh, 2i2 I had. Anyway, got a game going on. Nina taking some good trades against the Marine Stim. Just finishing up now. It's going to be a pretty nasty push from Percival, but Nina scouted. Nina prepared. It's a two base build from Percival. He's going to gather up and muster forces. Do we see SCVs pulled? No, we don't. If this was Skylar, we'd be like, all right, we're going in with SCVs. We're bringing. We're going to fly our barracks over. No. <laughs> You're going to title my stream next time to Dave told me to switch the to toss. You're a good Terran player, though, Skylar. Why? Charge is not done, but Nina's going to use the Zealots to flank and maybe get on top of whatever they can. They actually are helping to kill the tanks and we'll clean a lot of this up. This is pure Marine with Stim. Uh, another tank following up behind, but Nina's taking the trades. Is Nina going to be able to do this? Charge following up's really good. Uh, we do have a Robo Bay. I almost think she should just get a War Prism and go, should have just went gate heavy, but she's on two bases. It's two bases, the two bases. In that case, it wouldn't be too bad. And Immortal, Big Daddy Immortal coming in to pounce on this. Not a lot from Mr. Percival here. Nina actually may just be able to seal the deal. I doubt it from how these two play. Charge is a long way coming. Zealots tanking, body blocking for the Stalkers to get SEV kills, which are actually going to be huge. And actually, she's cleaning up the Marauders behind us. The Big Daddy Immortal was helping that fight, by the way. Uh, Stalkers here. She does see the tank and is going to... Oof, the SEV is actually being a bit of a problem for the Stalkers. Can Nina get on top of this? Stim's done. The Marauders have been a bit of an issue. She target flares Marauder number one, jumps on top of the tank. Big Daddy Immortal is, oh, a little bit of missed micro for Mina from a perfect fight, but it's still quite damn good. Uh, yeah, she can't steal the game, but goddamn. The pressure, the damage, the carnage, the destruction, and Percival hasn't got a single damn medevac out still this game. Oh, man. What a banger. Nina going to a third, taking the third base behind. I think it's pretty safe to say she could take one there. Percival probably not 100% sure exactly where she's at because he's not been able to inch toward her side of a map since his push got held. <clears throat> now that charge is done, there's a bit of a gate explosion and extended thermal lance and colossi are coming out. <clears throat> In terms of losses, damn, Nina didn't lose a worker though, but still... Like all gateway units. Actually, did Big Daddy? Immor no, the Immortal still lives. That is MVP Immortal right there. 13 kills and didn't even. He barely took a scratch in the plating. <clears throat> Imagine all ending without SCVs. True, Skyler. True. Had he pulled SCVs, I think that would have been a. I don't know about you guys. I think that would have been a way different outcome. And he needed a Liberator behind it, or two. Nina Postrum with the third base. Uh, we do have the five racks. This isn't all in. Uh, wait, no, he's taking the third base behind it, so it's not quite all in. But this time, I wouldn't hate to see a boys pull. He could do it uh, once he gets to that certain sweet spot. Yeah, I, we're not going to see it. No boys pull. Sorry, Skylar. Four medevacs in total will be there eventually, and Nina hopefully can pick some off. But this is mostly Zealots, Colossi, and Immortal 2 sentries. No, not much in terms of Stalkers. Oof. Okay, this is where the force field game comes in. But, Percival is just going to posture pick up. Oh, nice job with this tank evac, but guess what? <clears throat> Battery overcharge is activated, and Nina was quick to react on this. I mean, from how cheeky Percival has been playing and how aggressive, you got to love it, but, like, Nina has been on to it, and she thinks she's catching up in each game. Uh, being that she's securing a bit of an economic lead more than she had in previous games, I th dare I say it, I think she would really... She would have to really throw 
uh, to lose this one. But let's take a look at upgrades. Oh, she's got 1-1. One, one. My God, Nina's in a fantastic spot this game. However, there is going to be a drop. It is going to be scouted. Oh, by Stalkers. And guess what? Oh, that medevac. It's such a shame. She almost got the entire medevac with it. Uh, actually, this is going to be rough for Percival. Yeah, Percival is going to go down here for now. Observer is going to scout the drop. Nina could if she wanted to. Well, she can't recall yet. we got nine seconds, and this army is... Well, there's a little bit of army here to certainly scare it a bit. Percival going to be as aggressive as he usually is and push over here. See how stuff's mining out. Main base mined out a little here. Nina's as well. <clears throat> Nina has deflected the, the uh, drop, but it's all going to be one big push from our Terran player. Nina taking a fourth. I do love the fourth behind it, honestly. Just Oh, no, but I don't love the Colossi. Awkwardly moving out of position. That was such devastating losses for Nina in just a moment. My dear Lord. That was absolutely crazy. All right, blink forward, but there is a tank. Uh, Disruptor's going to go not hit the tank, unfortunately. And it's... Uh, just two disruptors. Battery overtrider activated. Immortal. Oh no. Morty the Immortal. The legend has fallen. He had so many kills this game. That's got to be the MVP unit uh, on Nina's side. But who knows? We got like. By our ratings, we got another 30 minutes to go, right, guys? Three Templar archives. I don't care if that's the Terran. Oh. Nina had two last game. Oh my god. Oh my god, that Nova was sick. We got some battered medevacs though too, so if Nina can just bait him in more and more as she jumps on top of this, she can clean up the medevacs this game. Oh, two tanks are going to be a bit of a problem. Uh, it has to be careful engaging this, but the disruptor is going to zone back. She's going into another robotics facility and getting into a plus two ground weapons as two armor has finished, so she is an upgrade advantage if she goes the quick 3-3 somehow by just fighting with what she has that would be if a uh, 2 to one upgrade for Protoss feels good man uh, when you can get in that spot Percival's gonna get a fourth behind us who doesn't get the medevac picks up a few bio units but that was just a debate oh three marauders fall and get splattered was it three four dear lord you need a pulverizing all right, Percival, the droppy Doom Drop guy that he is, is going up for the fourth base. Nita is wise to it, does warp in some zealots, catches this, but is going to buy a little bit of time hoping to save this base. Some more units being warped in. Guess what? She's going to make it. Does she blink forward? Afterburn's activated. She's going to pick off some units left and right. And Percival was going to try to go hit with Liberators, but he's going to need them defensively. Nina jumping on the Metavax. Speaking of Metavax, here's some more of the original battered ones. Okay, Archons on the Liberators. Actually, surprisingly, Archons are pretty damn good against Liberators. Nina's done such a better job at sniping Metavax this game. Five have fallen so far. We have some very damaged ones. In fact, this one down to one HP. Zealot's getting a run by. It's the first... Nina's been way more aggressive this game, and I love it. Did she get something in here, too? All right, so Nina is up to 71 workers. Percival 54 just now starting up his planetary fortress in the fourth base location. She has 3-3 three, three on the way like I was hoping to see. Percival just now getting into 2-2. Two, two. And with Chrono Boost, that can finish up the... Oh, losing two Liberators is huge. Nina has to be careful, though. Is trying to debate. Does get a Marauder. Does she get a nice money shot to the Disruptor? No, just falls short. Is going to try to push up this path. Army supply in favor of Nina. Uh, truthfully, I, guys, I got to say, Percival plays with a cool fucking style. Like, this game has been less Widow Mine heavy, which has been more impactful, I think, a bit. But he's still, in all the games, he's been using tanks at times I don't usually see Terrans go. Uh, and it is quite good. It, I mean, like, in a way, it kind of reminds me of Hero Marine a little bit. Uh, for a bad analogy, being that he's a Korean player and has his own style like this. But how the game's transitioning here from how he opens. Very kind of almost cheesy, uh, more aggressive builds. Not necessarily cheesy. 
Oh my dear lord, Nita's gonna try to fight the army and the planetary, and guess what? She's gonna get some dividends. She's gonna clean it up, GG. And Nina takes game number three in under 30 minutes. Can you believe it? Holy smokes. That was in under 20 minutes. Woof. We are moving on to game number four. If Nina wins, she takes it. But from how these two are playing, could be a best of five. All the way to the fifth series, I mean. Uh, -uh. crazy games. So I'm going on. How much did I stream before the delay? I wish I knew because I streamed. I don't know how much. Uh, I want to say we were done at like 11:30 last night with EPT Americas. So my stats for today are a little scuffed. Or no, I thought it was till 11:30, but no. I what the hell? Oh, I streamed early. I streamed 10 hours and 20 minutes today. Holy shit! So far. That is crazy. Uh, well, thank you guys that have hung around since the beginning, because that's absolutely nuts. <laughs> I'd say, yeah, we are full-time. So anybody got an extra Prime laying around or anything? Appreciate you. Because we're living off that tens of dollars of ad revenue for today. And the Prime sub from Abel Bacon. Thank you. <laughs> Spawning in the bottom left-hand corner. Of inside and out. Give it up for Percival. And his opponent in the upper right. It is Nina. And license to kill. And the yellow and blue again. Are we going to see a Reaper expand from Percival this game? Actually, funnily enough, I joke, but uh, I will say, I think this is the first month that I'm going to be getting over $100 in ad revenue. <laughs> That's actually pretty, pretty cool. It sounds, it's silly, but like, I hate running more ads, but I'm like, well, guess it's better than a sharp stick in the eye, right? But I, I should be running them on breaks instead and whatever, but eh. Maybe we'll figure that out. When I get better at multitasking even more then we'll we'll consider that because it's smarter first full again with the cheeky openers oh for sure Percival does he plays like a madman he's a very underrated player uh get ya maybe he'll end up best to 69 thorn nice eating too many strikes Welcome, Predator. Fred at 561. New chatter. Yeah, I think we might uh, consider omitting the ladder session tonight. Giddy up. Thank you for the follow up. NJW Boom. And thank you for the follow, Impaler Moon. Giddy up. Greatly appreciated. We take follows too. That means y'all might be coming back here in the future during Dave's grumpy ladder sessions and tournaments I host and ESL EPT Open Cups, DreamHack qualifiers, and et cetera, et cetera. More OSC events, most importantly. If you want to help out OSC. Am I? Or am I so sane that you just blew Yo, your mind? Thorn, speaking of which. Thorn 969. Almost $5 in prime almost subs. Almost $5 in prime subs. 
Thank you very much for the six months with Prime at that. Wow, I feel extra special for a Prime from Thorn. That is quite cool. Thank you very much, buddy. Prime and Abel Bacon showing... So that that's like a sign to streamer that you're like, all right, hats off when you give that Prime sub. For any of you Amazon Prime buyers. Okay, Nina is going to open with Dark Shrine. And it is going to be revealed, I believe. Yeah, where is it? Actually, it's not. It's a proxy Dark Shrine right to the face! Oh my god, Dave. If you guys don't know me, by the way, look at my initials. Dave Testa, DT. I'm a Protoss player who loves DTs, ironically. Unironically. And we're going to see a proxy Dark Shrine to the face. But I don't think Nita can build a super battery here from this location. So it's a little awkward. So they're not going to be fast warping DTs, but that is... Personal. And it's three racks, too, so guess what? This is... She, uh, there's going to be an eBay. Nina's going to have this finished. Hopefully, he doesn't have turrets immediately, because she scouted the Adepts. He's going to scout the proxy, not like this. Nina! Oh, wait, but look at... Can this survive just long enough? It's slow warp. It's such a big brain. That's why she's doing that. She's going to lose them all. This might cost her the game. No, oh, like that. No. That was such a huge loss. But the 500 IQ play with that positioning is the warp the DT's in right there. Oh, man. Look at the losses. 250. That's more than 250. The DT's that didn't warp in. You're talking 125, 125. Times three, plus the pylon, and the 150, 150. You're talking a lot of math, and everybody knows streamer should not do math. Or especially casters. Casters and math is bad. So normally Nina would be able to hold this, but consequently with the build, it's this is going to be over. We're going to game five pretty quickly here. Um... Nina's gonna try her best to hold, but battery overcharge is depowered. Probe's gonna come in. Uh, there's still a battery holding though. Okay. Battery's depowered completely of energy. And yeah, there's still a Marauder. Oh wait, a DT. What? DT saves the day. DT gets cleaned up. Look at look at Bio. Imagine Terran. Look at Percival. He's just so good. Oh my goodness. Is this OJ Stimson we see over here, folks? Because Percival coming in hot and insanely ahead. I don't think Nina can come back from this game. She is down pretty far. I mean, I guess so, but Percival starting a third. He's like, ah, we can just go on. I'm surprised she didn't tap out. I guess she did hell better than <clears throat> one might think. Hmm. Concussive shell on the way. Infantry armor plus one on the way. Or Percival. Nina's just getting out gates and she's gonna hit with whatever she can. She just has blank. No charge. Against upgraded bio, unupgraded blank stalkers. That's a uh, it's a hope and a dream, folks. That's all I can say. Nina's going to try to take the best fight she possibly could, and guess how she's going to do it? She's going to try to segment this off. Is she going to blink and get the... Oh. I was going to say if she caught the medevacs with those, it'd be crazy. But in a, a classy effort, Nina, GG's. Let me see what's going on there. I'm joking about tens of dollars in ad revenue because I have no idea how much. Yeah, I probably will for today. Like 10 bucks. $15 today. Let's go, baby. Actually, I'm just thinking about it. So I casted ESL EPT Americas last night. 
didn't cast on Sunday, but we laddered. We did a lot of like random streams of everything. Didn't cast ESL Asia because I casted Vulcan Cup stuff. I casted some Diamond League thing I played in on Saturday. Casted at tournament Dan Mako and I did on or I yeah, I randomly threw together on Dan in honor of Dan. I did two tournaments Friday and Thursday, so damn, I've been doing a lot of casting again. I'm excited. And guys, again, to help out OSC, if anybody has a few dollar dues and wants to help fund these tournaments. And a great, great organization. Check out the online sport championships. Uh, shout out to Eddie for everything he does. And I have helped fund it, uh, slightly helped fund this event, which is this is this the qualifiers, so... We're going to be moving on week to week on Tuesdays. I'm going to be casting at 4 p.m. Eastern uh, until the event is done. And the winner will go to the Hall of Fame, as you can see in the link there, which I will be going over with you guys before we end tonight. Knowing me, I'll probably end up doing a little strat after I get bored, but I'm hoping we get on the uh, fizzle down. This is certainly a last game because this is game number five. Spawning in the upper left hand corner. Give it up for the madman himself. It is Percival in the blue here to take it or lose it and be qualified. And his opponent in the bottom right. Bedfast calls her Nina Nina, the bike micro ballerina, but I'm just going to call her Nina with a license to kill in the yellow representing said team. All right. Not going to see any cheeky maxi paxi out of Nina in this game. I, you know, I almost wouldn't hate Nina to do a max pax against Percival in a way. Uh, how she does it with the two zealot. Uh, just because, well, it would lead to some spicy gameplay for sure. It obviously wouldn't do anything because Percival is not... Uh, expanded on the high on the low ground until after uh, Starport at least in any of the games. So maybe here's uh, here's Hopium. We have something different for an opener. We did have the three racks, like I said last game, but he still did it a little cheeky. But he's just playing smart and safe. Uh, Percival actually looks like he is going to play a. A relatively standard macro game. Nina is going to try to force... I'm joking around. He did do one game, I believe. Uh, but that could have been in the previous series because these two played earlier on the upper side of the bracket. If you guys want to see the games that have been played tonight, it's exclamation mark B. Get a pizza while I smoke a cig. Imagine. I'm pretty sure I'm about last on the long line of casters and people awaiting things. Said as I light a cigarette, getcha. Who asked? If... <laughs> That's too funny, though. And I'm pretty sure it's no smoking everywhere in the world, so. There you go. Okay, we're going to have the bunker. It's going to be a 1 1 1 in base this time. A little bit more of a macro game. Let's see what we get out of both of them. Oh, it, I say that. But it's Percival we're talking about. He's going proxy starport. He is going proxy starport. Am I? Or am I so sane that Cuddler. you just blew your mind? Thank you for Duck the four Cuddler months. Just, subscribed. just in the nick of time, we're approaching the end of the month. We're closer to the sub goal. We are one step closer. Ignore the thing, it's wrong. Probably approaching 270? I don't know. Whatever, but I appreciate the shit out of you, Duck Cuddler. Or as Reza would call you, Cuck Duddler. We love you, Duck. Alright, not just me. I'm saying everybody loves you, Duck. Robo opener from Nina, but this is going to be interesting because the proxy starport, it's going to be a Hellion drop, Reno. Hellions be scouted and be damned. Nina is probably not going to be expecting this. SCV is going to go return. Now, if this SCV is scouted. Oh, wait, Nina knows what this is, maybe. She's got the pylon here. Uh. Sadly, not a blink opener. 
She's going right into Robo Bay. This could be... This could be Ogre. She does have the wall, but it's the Medivac that's the problem. This could be an insta-kill. But Nina is pretty... Yeah, heck, so when stuff gets clumped up, it's kind of rough. She's got nothing. This is like the worst case scenario. Uh, oh my god! The body block from the Stalker. The micro from Nina. Look at this. Absolutely beautiful control from this uh, lady. She's uh, absolutely on top of it. Adapt, you're actually going to finish our uh, deal the finishing blow to one of the Hallides. Not game ending damage, folks. But 10 probes did fall. It was a lot of damage, but that was considering the build. This is a little bit of a build order counter, it feels like. Well, behind this, it's going to be a tech lab. Are we going to see Cloak Banshees? Are we going to see a fusion core? Uh, and nod to special. I think we're probably going to. We may just see a Raven. But I'm guessing it'd be Cloak Banshees, if anything, it was going to be more dastardly. But guess what? The units are still here, and they're going to get more damage. Oh, man. Nina is losing more probes. I mean, fortunately, Nina could take the back third base. She's going to have an observer out. But unfortunately, it is going to be Cloak Banshees. And, uh, hmm. I'm not sure Nina is aware of this. If she gets a scout of the base, she really needs to take this observer and look at the base. Uh, that's the tell. Because if she sees no starport, she would probably guess what's coming. Okay, she's going to send an observer out. We got Gravitic Boost. Uh, hmm. It is a disruptor drop. And Nina's like, all right, we got to find some value ourselves. Cyclone, Medivac, some Marines. Not really a ton of stuff for Percival. But this Sim City, actually, look at this. This is going to prevent any damage from a disruptor unless she gets right. Uh, she has to find somewhere to find value. And it's going to be hard. Oh, that was about as good as this shot as she could. And get wrecked, Tank. You ain't finding nothing. Uh, that said. Cloak is about to finish. Second Banshee about to pop. And there is no shield battery. She's going right into Blink behind it. And she's on three gate production. Got a fourth coming. Observer's going to scout the push. But this ain't everything. It's the Cloak Banshee push that's more annoying. The tank. Oh, she doesn't want to do this with the tank there. Oh, or does she? Oh, no. Falling just short. That would have been the most impressive catch. Unfortunate catch, really. Or Nina. Oh, I think she saw the Banshees as they came in. Oh, she was paying attention to the Micro of the Prism. Uh, does not have any detection as of yet. He's going to recall the Observer, I hope. Yeah, it's in odd mode, but she has to take it out of it. Oh, so many workers going down. Blink's not done yet. This is so annoying. Oh, oh, the humanity. No blink. It's This is like the build order counter of build order counters, it feels like. Behind it, another cloaked banshee. And she doesn't have a forge to drop photon cannons, which would actually be kind of nice to have like one behind. But more importantly, there's a push coming in the front. Nina's focusing on what is behind her. And you know what? Losing that observer. Oh, no! Nina's going to lose the disruptor! She's going to have to rely on the Colossus. Dude, Banshees in the back are going to be able to push into the mineral line with this. Boys pull or not. Okay, Stalkers and the Observer are going to help with this, but another Banshee going to join the frontal push, I think, this time. That one survives. Battery overcharge is going to be deactivated and on cooldown with all the boys pulled here. This is a two base all in if I ever saw one. In fact, uh, yeah, I mean, it could be less, but it looks certainly ogre. Losing that Warp Prism and Disruptor was the, really the play for what made this harder. I don't see Nina living, but I could be wrong. All right, she's got some time to warp in a few more units. We don't have charge, but I... Eh, just a lot to deal with. She's gonna, she does have the back third base. Does she get a Juicy Nova? Does damage the tank, but it's not enough to kill it. So that's not much. One of the Banshees falls. Another Banshee coming behind us. More tanks. More Marauders. More Terran. So sad. Percival is strategist and very good execution. Percival takes the qualifiers. Very well played by both of them. And congrats to Percival.
And that was a short one. Percival and Nina are probably both relieved to be. Congrats, me, he says. And that is it. That was another one. So if you guys see me later, I'll be on. Let's take a look at the Hall of Fame. So if you take a look there, We've had a lot of players from Clen to Skillis to Geralt to Mana to Jon Snow special hero.